Today on Molson, that's hockey. Oh, I don't hear the fat lady singing just yet, but I suspect she's just off stage. With the season on the brink, collective resolves have been tested. Have the scales been tipped in favor of the owners? Plus, we'll be joined by Brian Burke with his suggestions for a solution. And former Crashers president Stan Caston with a way to bring both sides back to the table. Trying to work Buzik, he beat him with speed, the puck is bouncing, he scores! Beat him like a rented mule, and then took Roman Turek to task. And you can bet Mike Modano was taken to task by the NHLPA for his alleged comments questioning the players' resolve in the NHL lockout. Or was he misquoted? Good day, everyone. Welcome to Molson That's Hockey. I'm Gino Retta. It is great to have you with us today. In a feature interview in this morning's National Post, the Dallas Stars captain suggested it would be difficult for players to stand firm if the lockout continued in the next season. The players would be chomping at the bit to get a deal done. But once the story became public, Madonna wasn't comfortable with what he saw. So I spoke with him a short time ago. Mike, you were quoted in this morning's edition of the National Post as saying it's going to be tough to come back in October and say that we're going to stay tough and stand firm. You're going to have guys who are saying, what are we doing? You're going to have guys chomping at the bit to get a deal done. Did you say that? Well, the last part was is pretty true. I mean, we're going to be excited. We're going to be nervous. We're going to be anxious to find out what happened. But the first part about it is was more or less said. What I did say was that along this path, along this uh, this journey that we're taking, we're going to be tested. And not that our resolve is not very strong. I believe very much that uh, what we're doing, we believe in very strongly. Our solidarity has grown stronger throughout the course of this year. So, But uh, what I did said, you know, throughout this whole situation, uh, the scenario, we're going to be tested. You know, the league is going to be tested, and certainly the fans are going to be tested throughout this whole, this whole situation, the way it's played out. Did you say, though, that you were concerned that you may not be able to stand firm if this continued on until next October? No, I, I really didn't say that. I think it got twisted around as being, you know, again, saying that we're going to be very much tested. You know, we're going to be tested how strong we are as a group, how, how strong we are as a union. Um, and certainly come October, November next year, if it does come to that, unfortunately, that we're going to be really faced with some questions. And, uh, you know, and we're going to find out. And, and I have all the faith and uh, belief in a system right now that we're, the longer this goes on, you know, the stronger we're going to get. Did your agent, any fellow players, the Players Association, or anyone at all contact you concerned about the comments that were attributed to you in this morning's paper? Not really. I think if you look through it, you know, everything gets twisted a little bit in the media and what you say and what you read, you know, by the time you do get uh, a handle of the print issue that things are twisted around a little bit and sometimes you forget, you leave out what some of the things you do say and the comments you made. And, and that's just part of the media and obviously right now everybody's a little on pins and needles so anything that's said and, and mentioned in the media right now is a little bit magnified and, and um, if people can use it against us, if the owners can use it against us, I think that's in their best effort, interest. So, you know, what we just have to try to do is maintain our, our, our firm stance on the whole cost certainty issue and the salary cap and, and sometimes just be a little more aware of what we're saying. Mike, there's so much money out there to be made, and people are walking away from a lot of money, money they may not be able to make up through the duration of their uh, NHL contracts when we do get back to playing hockey. Are you concerned that there's some players who would have a hard time staying out? Well, I think, you know, possibly, I think. Uh, but again, I think we've been well aware for this for three or four years now. Um, uh, the players knew that this day was coming. Everybody's made sacrifices and commitments to kind of towards this time to make it uh, um, understandable what the situation is and how long it could last. And, um, you know, we went through it before. We've been through it a couple times where, you know, a lot of people made some great sacrifices for the game and for the position we are in today. And, you know, you know, thank God we're in a, a great situation. We make a great life. Many doors have been opened up for us for the from the game of hockey. and. And we'd like to continue that on and, and to carry it on for the younger guys and, and know that, you know, 10 years ago, we're in the same boat. You know, we hung together, we stayed tight and strong, and, and things worked out great. Mike, thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us. We appreciate it. Thanks, Gino. On Tuesday, Carolina Hurricanes owner Peter Carmanos gave his impression of the prospects for a resolution saying, my gut feeling is that this season's gone. I know personally that I'd be willing to risk another season. 
I'm enough of a hockey fan to realize that once we got it straightened out, the fans would come back. But there's the risk they wouldn't. Even with that in mind, I feel very, very strongly that if we don't get it straightened out, we don't have to worry about the NHL existing anyways. Well, he's entitled to, to his opinion there. Um, I, you know, I don't hear the fat lady singing just yet, but I suspect she's just off stage. And uh, uh, we'd like to think we're going to get this thing going. Uh, I believe there's time to get the right deal done um, until there isn't. Other news of the week saw the NHL cancel a Board of Governors meeting that was scheduled for this Friday in New York. It was expected that Commissioner Gary Bettman would seek a mandate to cancel the remainder of the season. Instead, the league announced that the meeting was no longer necessary, citing a lack of talks and new information as reasons for the cancellation. Yesterday marked the 10th anniversary of the settlement of the previous NHL lockout, which ended in January 1995. The NHL and the Players Association managed to save a 48-game season, which began January 20th that year. After a brawl at the conclusion of Monday's AHL game between Edmonton and St. John's, the league has handed down several suspensions. Edmonton tough guy Rocky Thompson will sit out five games for his punch on the Leafs' David Ling. In addition, the AHL suspended Edmonton goaltender Tyler Moss and St. John's right winger Jason McDonald one game each for their actions. He's faking it. He doesn't have a headache. You can see the when I when I hit him there, it landed on his neck. It didn't hit him in the head. And uh, for him to say, "Oh, I kind of came to him on the ice," is a lie because when I was on top of him, he was sitting there talking to me. There, I know that I know the Maple Leafs are sitting in the room laughing right now and saying, "Ah, we got him. This is great." And Doug Shedden and uh, McClellan are high-fiving each other. And uh, you know, everything's been blown out of proportion, but they got what they wanted. Montreal police say they've recovered Sidney Crosby's stolen sweater from Canada's gold medal game, and they've arrested a 48-year-old man and charged him with theft. And one day after the 10-year anniversary of the 1994-95 lockout coming to an end, we've hit day 119 of the current lockout. And there have been no meetings since December the 14th when both sides rejected the latest offers made by the other. Theo Fleury will not be on the ice as the Horse Lake Thunder open up a best-of-five series with the Stony Plain Eagles of the Alberta Senior Hockey League tonight. Fleury wanted to play, but if he was still technically under an NHL contract last season, he wouldn't qualify. Or would he? Hockey Alberta heard his appeal this afternoon. The decision is still pending, but the manager of the team now says Fleury will not play tonight. With more on the story, here's Jermaine Franklin. It was supposed to be simple. Give the Horse Lake Thunder a call, sign a card, and away he goes for the Allen Cup. But Theo Fleury should have known nothing comes that easy for him. I think there's been, uh, you know, a misconception, uh, you know, all the time that, uh, you know, I just tried to stay out of the spotlight in the last little while and, uh, you know, just do my own thing and, and uh, you know, concentrate on, you know, trying to, trying to live my life. Because Fleury was technically under contract with the Chicago Blackhawks last year, he was deemed ineligible to play by Hockey Alberta. But the 1,000-point NHL man believed his contract was terminated with his last violation of the league's substance abuse program. Now Fleury just wants to be back on the ice again. You know, there's no NHL hockey, and, uh, you know, it's a great way to, you know, spend some time and uh, have some fun and get competing again. Even provincials, per se, are based on uh, fairness and ensuring that everybody has the same abilities to uh, go the same distance. And, and uh, no different, uh, you know, whether it be uh, a professional hockey player or, or another amateur hockey player that's uh, moving uh, from team to team. With the playoffs just days away, the appeals process has been sped up and the hearing was held Wednesday, and a decision could be sent down as early as Wednesday night. In the meantime, Fleury is skating with the club officially as a coach. Good group of guys, and, uh, um, you know, we, I, we, from all I could see, you know, we got a really good team, and, uh, you know, a team that, uh, you know, definitely uh, has a chance. Last year, Hockey Canada's Board of Directors passed the rule that any player under an NHL contract last season could not compete in the Allen Cup playoffs. Hockey Canada was unable to comment on the situation as President Bob Nicholson is in the midst of travel to Russia. Jermaine Franklin, TSN, Calgary. And some sad news out of Calgary today. J.R. Bud McKaig, a part owner of the Calgary Flames, died suddenly while on holidays in Barbados. McKaig was a prominent businessman and was inducted into the Calgary Business Hall of Fame in 2004. He was awarded the Order of Canada in 1999. McKaig was 75 years old.
All right, time now for the Molson Trivia Teaser. We want to know against which team did Theo Fleury score his first career NHL goal on January 7, 1989? The answer is coming up in a moment. Just ahead on Molson That's Hockey, we have more on the lockout from our Brian Burke, who has a couple of ideas of how he can end this lockout right now. Plus, Stan Kasten will be in studio with three key ideas on how the two sides can get back to the negotiations. And later, it's all about skills development on our Hockey Canada Report. Well, it's a new year. Yeah, it's time for changes. Yeah. Like take yoga. Latin dance. Speak Latin. Read more. Hard covers. Write a novel. Maybe we'll start with the new lemon cranberry muffin with our coffees. Or the new 12 grain bagel. Yeah, that's good. Make a fresh change to your morning with Tim Horton's new oven fresh lemon cranberry muffin or new 12 grain bagel with a coffee just $1.89. Always fresh at Tim Horton's. Are there any questions? So this was your idea? Mm hmm Yeah. You bought 50,000 acres of farmland. Cornfields. You bought 50,000 acres of cornfields. Yeah. Without even test drilling to see what's under it. I don't care what's under it. Do I have to remind you we're in the fossil fuel business? No, we're in the fuel business, plain and simple. And ethanol fuel comes from corn. By uncovering the visionaries, we build your investments. Knowing pays. Aim Trimark. Jeep Grand Cherokee, with an interior that's quieter than a Jaguar S-Type 3.0. It's worth a look. The off-road legend continues on-road. The Coors Light Brewing Company salutes the buddy. I have told a ridiculous lie to back up a friend's ridiculous lie. I've slept outside. Because a friend put a sock on the doorknob. I've never hooked up with a friend's sister more than once. I have been a friend. By being with my friends. Girlfriends. Friend. The Coors Light Brewing Company is proud of all the brothers from different mothers and the easy drinking taste of the ice cold silver bullet. Molson That's Hockey is brought to you by Molson Canadian. I am Canadian. And in part by Tim Horton's new lemon cranberry muffin and new 12 grain bagel. Time now to revisit our Molson Trivia Teaser. We asked you against which team did Theo Fleury score his first career NHL goal January 7th, 1989. It came against the Edmonton Oilers, specifically scored on Grant Fury. Well, it's Brian Burke. Brian, yesterday was the 10-year anniversary of the resolution of the last major NHL lockout. Is there anything we can do to kickstart these negotiations? Well, there are a couple of things I think that we could talk about anyway. One is, I hear a common reaction from players that the owners are asking them to solve this problem. They're asking them to make all the concessions and somehow make this system work. When the owners have not put forth a meaningful revenue sharing proposition, which I think the owners should do, and I would challenge them to do that. For example, you could look at something like this for the first five years, say, of a 10-year agreement. The first year, regular season revenue sharing of 50, increasing 25 per year to a maximum of 150, 75 million from the playoffs each year, so you'd go up at the end to $225 million in revenue sharing as among the owners. That might move the players' view on linkage. It might not, but I think if the league's prepared to do that, it certainly would behoove them to do that and maybe get the players to move off the linkage issue. All right, well, they can't negotiate one deal. Now you've got two proposals. Let's take a look at proposal number one. Okay, the proposal that I would say is, right now the players have said, with their rollback and the changes they made to the system, that this will work. And I say on this one, I'm from Missouri, show me. You want to say that this will work, then I'd say to the league, would you be willing to try it for two years? Come back and play right now. We start the season, no changes to anything other than the rollback the players have already put on the table, and we play the rest of the year. Then we start a 10-year agreement starting in June. And we take the players' proposal with six notable exceptions. But we'll take their proposal and try it for two years. And if it works, and if the revenues and wages line up, in terms of what the reasonable percentages should be, we stay on that system. If it doesn't work, the players are capped for the remaining eight years of that deal. All right, then, proposal number two. I would say the players' proposal 
is guaranteed, under what I just said, is guaranteed to move into a cap because it's not meaningful on the system, I would change six things. First, a meaningful luxury tax at 75 cents on the dollar, starting at $38 million. They have proposed, the union has proposed, a 20% tax starting at $40 million. It won't have any deterrent effect on spending. Number two, maximize entry-level system bonuses at $300,000. So if a Rick Nash comes in and tears it up as a rookie, he can make some meaningful dough, but not the millions and millions that the Kovalchuk's and other players have made. Let's pay that to the veterans. Number three, amend the arbitration system. Make it so that a player or a club can file. They can only do it once every three years, and if they select a two-year award, it becomes every four years is the only time they can do it. Go to a high-low system that's fair, keep the walk away, keep the walk back, but amend arbitration. Number four, reduce the schedule to 72 games. We play too many games, and this keeps getting lost in the shuffle. And in my mind, this is a meaningful thing for our fans who are suffering through this. We play too many games. The product suffers as a result. Next, I'd say move the buyout to 50 cents on the dollar. Right now, it's either 33 cents or 66 cents. Make it simpler, 50 cents on the dollar on the buyout. And last, qualifying offers at 75%. The union's proposal to retool that is meaningless in my opinion. If you make those changes and you try the player's proposal, I think it might work. But your proposal there did not include a hard salary cap. Will you ever convince the NHL to take anything but a hard cap? That I don't know. So far the players haven't moved off or the owners haven't moved off cost certainty slash hard cap. I think they're willing to consider a system that has cost certainty but does not contain a hard cap, but not until the players move off linkage. It's not unreasonable for the owners to say this new system has to have some reasonable rational relationship between the revenues the industry generates and the salaries that are paid to the players. Brian, you've obviously spent a lot of time on this. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Still to come, former Thrashers president Stan Kasten contributes three key ideas as to how the league and the players can get negotiations back underway. Plus, new methods for skills development headline our latest Hockey Canada report. Hi, may I take your order? I'd like a classic single combo, but instead of fries, <gasps> I'd like a baked potato. <gasps> No problem. Introducing combo choices only from Wendy's. You can choose fries, chili, a baked potato, side or Caesar side salad at no extra cost. Dave Thomas always said people like a choice. So choose Wendy's. It's better here. Our pickup window is open late. Well, it's a new year. Yeah, it's time for changes. Yeah. Like take yoga. Latin dance. Speak Latin. Read more. Hardcover. Write a novel. Maybe we'll start with a new lemon cranberry muffin with our coffees. I'll try the new 12 grain bagel. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Make a fresh change to your morning with Tim Horton's new oven fresh lemon cranberry muffin or new 12 grain bagel with a coffee just $1.89. Always fresh at Tim Horton's. The Coors Light Brewing Company salutes the buddy. I have told a ridiculous lie to back up a friend's ridiculous lie. I have slept outside because a friend put a sock on the doorknob. I've never hooked up with a friend's sister. More than once. I have been a friend. By being with my friends. Girlfriends. Friend. The Coors Light Brewing Company is proud of all the brothers from different mothers and the easy drinking taste of the ice cold silver bullet. Where did you get that feather? Hmm, our trip. We load up our new Nissan Pathfinder and head out. Make camp, can't make camp. Get a better idea, get lost, get found, jump in the lake. Jump out of the lake. We keep driving, watch four movies, come across this family and give them a ride. Well, the father's a Navajo Healy man and soon we're around this fire and they give us this hawk feather. We drive home without touching a freeway and get back just as we run out of CDs. Broccoli? The new seven passenger, 270 horsepower Nissan Pathfinder. Bell Express View, Canada's leading direct-to-home satellite company. TSN, Canada's sports leader. The people who bought you Canada's most popular sports website, tsn.ca, now take you to the next level. Get all the latest scores, standing to news from around the sports world, right on your TV. TSN Extra, interactive sports television. Access channel 275 on Bell Express View. Jake! 
Jason Spezza. And we're now joined in studio by a man who knows a thing or two about running professional sports franchises. 27 years running the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, five years ending last April, you ran the Atlanta Hawks, the Thrashers, and the Atlanta Braves. Stan Kasten now joins us in studio. You're the only man ever to run three professional sports franchises simultaneously. Welcome to the show. Hey, it's great to be here. And I have to uh, be doing things like this because... Uh, Someday I'll be back with the team and the commissioners can start fining me again for saying things. So I'm getting all this out of my system. Now, a short time ago, Brian Burke was here in studio with us and he shared two different proposals. You don't have a proposal to offer up. You've got a process to offer up that maybe can get these negotiations moving. Well, I hope so. I've stayed out of this till now because I am a firm believer, having been in so many collective bargaining negotiations myself, I'm a firm believer in the process. And the only solution which uh, is workable is one which is achieved between the parties. Um, but lately there has been so much misinformation and character assassination and rumors uh, and speculation thrown across the table that I thought uh, I could suggest some things that would maybe help the process move along, help the two parties get together and come up with something. All right, so what can we do? What's your suggestion, Stan? Well, the first thing I'd like to see is, number one, I'd like to see Bob Goodnow be given an opportunity to address all of the governors face-to-face. -face. Recently, we heard Bob complain in his response to the, to the uh, league's last offer that, that the league's numbers were all wrong and that he didn't think the owners were getting all this straight stuff on all the on all the offers. Well, I think he should be given an opportunity to go in there and show he's not a bad guy, that he has a constituency that he's trying to represent and make his case. Number two, then I think Gary Bettman and his team should be allowed to go in and address all 700 players face to face and stop all the nonsense and show them that he's not trying to break the union, that he is a good guy. In fact, he's the best thing that ever happened to these players because their salaries have quadrupled in his tenure. Uh, and finally, I think when that's all over, both sides should be allowed to take a secret ballot on the other side's uh, position. That way we'll really know where people stand. And the secret ballot is important because then we'll get a true feeling. Owners won't feel intimidated by the presence of other owners or by the commissioner. And players won't be intimidated by the presence of other owners or the heads of the union. So I think with these three steps, we'll have everything on the table, everything will be honest and transparent, and we will finally know how everyone really feels. And you want the votes made public also. That's also very well, important. I, I think that's important. We all deserve yeah. to know where people stand, and I think that way we'll accomplish it. Now, there was one vote result already in, because I phoned the NHL and the NHLPA earlier today. They did receive your proposal, and they both said no. Are you surprised? Well, no, that, that's not surprising. I think initially everyone's reaction is to stay the course with their own plan the way they have spent time doing it. Maybe that means they're working on things that are even better and what they're doing will lead to a deal but if it's not leading to a deal I think it'll be hard to explain why we're calling off a season rather than trying something different rather than going to these lengths because anything that happens once the season is called off will be worse than whatever we can achieve now well Stan you've clearly put a lot of effort in this we appreciate your time my pleasure Molson that talking is brought to you by Molson Canadian I am Canadian and in part by Tim Horton's new lemon cranberry muffin and new 12 grain bagel. Once a season, and only once a season, Moore's has a sale. Right now, over half our suits and sport coats are on sale at great low prices. You'll find a huge selection of dress shirts and hundreds of casual and dress pants. Plus, big savings on sportswear, outerwear, and shoes which means the only way to beat a Moore's price is at the Moore's year-end clearance sale. Moore's, well-made, well-priced, well-dressed. I'd like a classic single combo, but instead of fries, I'd like a baked potato. No problem. Introducing combo choices only from Wendy's. Choose from five sides at no extra cost. Dave Thomas always said, if you're a Wendy's, you chose wisely. The Coors Light Brewing Company salutes the buddy. I have told a ridiculous lie to back up a friend's ridiculous lie. I have slept outside. Because a friend put a sock on the doorknob. I have never hooked up with a friend's sister. More than once. I have been a friend by being with my friends. Girlfriends. Friend. The
Coors Light Brewing Company is proud of all the brothers from different mothers and the easy drinking taste of the ice cold silver bullet. captioning of this TSN program is brought to you in part by Tums. Tums tackles heartburn fast. Tonight on TSN. On this day one year ago, Brian Boucher's record-setting five-game shutout streak ends when he surrenders a goal to the Thrashers. Boucher set a modern-day record with just over 332 minutes of shutout hockey, but he wouldn't blank another team for the rest of the season. And with the schedule at its halfway point, 15 of the 16 teams that would go on to make the playoffs already held playoff positions. Only the Dallas Stars had to make up ground to qualify for the postseason. They would eventually bump the Coyotes from the playoff hunt. Earlier this month, Team Canada capped off a dominant performance of the World Junior Hockey Championship. But great teams and players are not made overnight. Skill development begins at a very early age. And that's the focus of this week's Hockey Canada Report. Hockey Canada Skills Camps um, was an initiative that was conceived uh, back in 1998. We designed uh, skills manuals um, that our coaching committee and their uh, volunteer network developed as a hockey curriculum. And once we designed those manuals, then the thought came out, well, it's great, we've got a resource book, but how can we get out in the community and impact the community? So the brainstorming started from there. Hockey Canada skills camps are designed to help children develop and improve their fundamental skills in a fun and safe environment. Open to boys and girls playing in the Adam and Pee Wee divisions, camps are held in both one and two day sessions. They give them an opportunity to go into an environment that is uh, based on fun and, and based on enjoyment, but at the same time introducing kids to uh, fundamental skills in skating, passing, puck control, uh, shooting, and we'll even say goal scoring. Uh, and in that kind of an environment, I think kids really enjoy themselves. Entering their eighth season, Hockey Canada has expanded these camps to not only develop players on the ice, but educate young players in training and fitness. Uh, we do some off-ice stuff with them as well. We, we really think it's important that there's a respect element that's uh, conveyed to kids in terms of respecting the game, your opponents, your coaches, the officials. So there are a number of elements that we have couched into the, uh, the event or the uh, skills camp environment. We do about 75 of these a year where kids can come in and register for a very nominal fee and get the feeling of what it's like to be taught by Team Canada instructors. Try to keep it off of your body, not in front. Keep it out. Assisting in the development of young players is an important part of Hockey Canada and their ongoing performance of excellence plan. The response by young players coast to coast has exceeded expectations. For details and schedules, log on to www.hockeycanada.ca. Next edition of Molson Nuts Hockey comes your way in seven days' time. At that point, we'll have all the latest NHL news as we edge ever closer to that elusive drop-dead date. Coming up tonight on TSN, a little hockey for you. A TSN profile, the spotlight goes on Tiger Williams. Then at 8 o'clock Eastern, it's the Primus World Stars Tour. It's the World Stars versus Riga. In Latvia, Dave Randorf and Gary Green will have all the call for you. The next edition of Sports Center comes your way at 10 o'clock Eastern time with myself and Darren Edition. We will see you then. Have a great evening. Gino Retta's clothing, provided by Matteo Moss. A dominant performance by a world-class team. Congratulations, Team Canada. The gold medal is well-deserved. You've made our nation proud.
You don't get a nickname like Tiger by sitting back and watching life from the bleachers. The name suggests the ferocity with which Dave Williams approached life as a hockey player. For Williams, nothing came easy. There were many factors working against his success. But sometimes people forget just how important desire can be. He only knew one way to play. He played with all his heart and soul. If you measure his size with hearts, he'd probably be seven foot three. Whenever he was on the ice, you got from David Williams what he had. It's not about working eight to five. You want to work eight to five? You want to be average? That's fine. Just don't hang around with me. The two-bedroom house in Weyburn, Saskatchewan was getting crowded when David Williams came into this world. He was the fourth child born to Elizabeth and Robert on February 3rd, 1954. Four more would follow. I guess before I was born, they lived in a, uh, in a house without plumbing and, uh, you know, had a outdoor can and everything right by the river. Six of the eight Williams children were boys. Needless to say, things could get rambunctious. We always fought. The six of us as boys, and yes, there is a bit of a difference, but it was always competitive. They took their lead from their father, who got his boys involved in boxing. Dad was a pretty tough, rugged guy. Uh, he didn't explain. He told, and then the, if you didn't get it, you got it. He pushed us a little bit to get involved and, and to do our best and that sort of thing. My dad taught me to be the best you can be. It might not be pretty, but at the end of the day, people don't remember how it was done. They just remember the score. David followed his dad's message in pursuit of hockey. He was a classic rink rat, hanging around the arena waiting for a chance to play. He said, okay, Tiger, get in the goal. He said, I don't want to play goal. I said, that's what I drafted you for. He said, I don't want to play goal. I said, okay, take off your skates and go home. And I drafted you as a goalkeeper. That's what you're going to be. Williams adopted a wandering style, challenging opposing players. Because of this, Norman christened him Tiger. He soon moved out of the net and up to Bantam, where his feisty reputation grew and his commitment to school diminished. He got an aptitude test, and he just grabbed it with his pencil boldly printed his name and put NHL all over it in big block letters and handed it in. Knowing his goal, Tiger set out to make it happen. I remember we would have practices, outdoor rinks every Saturday morning and he'd be there. He would never miss a practice or a game, never. He was so focused on playing pro hockey and playing at the National Hockey League that he surpassed many of his peers who probably had a lot more natural ability. Tiger did not limit his battles to members of the opposing team. One time, he took on the referee, who happened to be his brother. He basically said he was going to get me at the rink if I gave him a penalty. Or, and uh, there weren't many games that he didn't get penalties. And uh, I had to give him a penalty, and uh, he came over, and uh, he gave me a, a punch. He was just a bad referee. And he made a bad decision, and he paid for it. While other parents tried to get Williams kicked off the team, his own mom and dad gave him their full support. Robert Taffy Williams worked as the team's equipment manager while Elizabeth attended games. She was always there for us. She was a real mom. She never had a job. She, her job was raising her family. It was at one of David's games that Elizabeth first took ill. She lost a battle with cancer when David was just 14. I think how he dealt with it is it made his commitment to play pro um, that much more stronger. He told mom that he was going to be in the NHL. And uh, once she died, there was nothing whatsoever in this world that was going to stop him from keeping that promise. David realized to meet his commitment, he needed to leave Weyburn. At 17, he went to Swift Current, Saskatchewan to play for their junior team. In his third season, he scored 52 goals and had over 300 penalty minutes. But Swift Current was not just about hockey. It's also where he met Brenda Dick. The day we, we met, that was the floor. And the ceiling is still somewhere. It's way up there. And, uh, you know, I just wished everybody could have that same relationship. We got married two days before he got drafted. 
And our whole honeymoon was basically going down to Toronto and meeting the, the Leafs and uh, signing. He couldn't have got a greater gift. I think that he thought, you know, Mom was, had a hand in it because, you know, he has been a Toronto fan all his life. There were more than a few people who doubted that Tiger could make it to the NHL. He enjoyed going back to Weyburn and waving his signing bonus around. Every player's got some guy that was such a jerk to them as a kid. And then finally, when you make it, you want to go back and just stuff all that money right down their throat and choke them to death. You know? I think there were some people that questioned his, uh, his ability to play. But uh, those people that questioned didn't know his dedication. But Tiger was not there yet. He had made quite a rambunctious uh, debut and uh, he wanted to stay up there and he was very disappointed when he got sent down to Oklahoma City. Coming to DVD January 18th. Hello. Can you hear me? Please help. They're going to kill me. Who is this, Chloe? Someone I'm talking to and it's destroyed. If you hang up, I mean, I didn't forget anybody else. Oh God. Don't miss the ultimate thrill ride that Ebert and Roper give two thumbs up. Kim Masinger, Chris Evans, Jason Statham, and William H. Macy. Singular. Add it to your collection on January 18th. So, got a reason for taking the one-ton challenge? Sure you do. There's climate change, cleaner air, saving money, the environment. You choose. Look, there are literally a ton of ways you can use less energy and lower your greenhouse gas emissions by one ton. There's public transportation. There's carpooling, using Energy Star appliances. And what else? It's all right here in your free guide. So order yours and get all you need to know in taking the one-ton challenge. Come on, we're Canadian. We're up for a challenge. A message from the government of Canada. It's your free guide. The tennis season starts at Melbourne Park. The year's first slam. We have complete coverage all the way to the finals. The 2005 Australian Open starts Sunday at 11.30 on TSN. I assume you know who I am. You're a gangster. This winter, what the hell is going on? two enemies will team up to face the most dangerous criminals in the city. The cops. They can't allow any of us to leave here alive. We get in the body here. Ethan Hawke. Lawrence Fishburne. Assault on Precinct 13. When this is over, you're going back to jail. I'd like to see you come try. In theaters everywhere, Wednesday, January 19th. Tonight on TSN. Hornets and Raptors, Sunday on TSN. I remember his first time he stepped on Maple Leaf Gardens ice. I was actually the first person on the ice uh, for training camp. He came out after me and he proceeded to skate right to the corner of the rink and hit the glass as hard as he could with his shoulder and his stick. Got up, went to the other end, hit the boards, and then kind of like, here I am, Toronto. Tiger Williams gave it his best shot at his first Leaf training camp, but management decided he could use some time in the minors. Was I happy about going to the money? No, I was not a happy camper. But in my growth as, as a player, I think that was a really big stone. Uh, he went and he played like he was playing for the Stanley Cup in Oklahoma City. Tiger was called up a few months later. He played his first NHL game in January 1975. We've been watching Hockey Night in Canada ever since I can remember. And uh, when you see it and he comes on the ice, you know, I was just bursting with, uh, with pride. But the work was far from over. I had arranged for him to take extra lessons skating from somebody that he thought was a crackpot, I guess. But uh, the big thing was that uh, anything uh, that would help him in the skating uh, would be worthwhile. It goes back to, to my basic character is that you want to be the best you can be. So if you weren't improving every day in your weak area, and then skating was my weak area, what the hell were you doing there? The Tiger's presence was hard to ignore. He wasn't that big a fellow, but uh, we ran into each other in the corner, and boy, his gloves came off, and away we went. And I was surprised, because he, he, he was a youngster, new, new fellow in the league. So I, 
wasn't expecting it. He got in a little skirmish with um, with Bob Clark. I stepped in. He actually kneed me, headbutted me, and actually he actually even beat, bit me on the cheek. Well, Tiger was a dirty player. He was a Tiger. I mean, you don't you don't lead the uh, league in penalty minutes without you know doing some dirty things. I believe it was in Los Angeles when. Um, Tagger and Dave Hutchison got into a, a pretty good scrap. This man jumped into the box with Tagger, and he didn't stay in there very long. Uh, so I, I recall the guy jumping in, and I call the guy climbing out, scratching the glass to get out. Tiger's feisty reputation caught up with him during his third season in the league. An incident with another player landed him in the courtroom. Tiger was coming down the wing with uh, with the puck. He was carrying it. Just over the blue line, I stood up on, uh, I stood up on him and, and kind of knocked him backwards off balance. He swung a stick with his, uh, he's left-handed, so he swung it with his right hand, and uh, it caught me just over the, over the head here and cut me open for about 20, 22, 23 stitches. I was skating down the ice, and Dennis grabbed my stick and hit himself over the head, plain and simple. And he got cut, and he bled a lot. I was actually in the hospital having our daughter Clancy. And I just thought the whole thing was terribly upsetting. I think it was needless and just a complete political thing that was happening at the time, not in hockey, but it definitely affected my life to a huge, huge degree at the time. Attorney General Roy McMurtry charged Tiger with assault. During the trial, intent could not be established, and Tiger was off the hook. His team had given him their full support, especially owner Harold Ballard. He treated me first class, and I returned the favor every single day of my life, and I miss him to this day. Ballard loved the way uh, that Tiger played and of the things he said. He just said whatever came into his uh, head, and uh, it was often uh, rough around the edges, and Ballard liked that, so they got along very well. Williams also had solid relationships with his teammates, especially line mates Daryl Sittler and Lanny McDonald. Toronto's number one line. Playing with uh, Lanny and Sit was, uh, it was unbelievable. I enjoyed playing with Tiger because he came to play every night. Didn't matter if you were in Philadelphia or on the road in any other building. You knew you were going to get everything of Tiger Williams when he was on the ice. They had a really good line and he could play. Uh, I think people people forget that because, you know, he was into the entertainment side and, you know, rah, rah, rah. We're talking about underrated players. I think he was probably, uh, you know, one of the players that was underrated in the league. Although Tiger knew his role was enforcer, he felt scoring goals would ensure his future. 20 goals a season was his benchmark. The Leafs came into Boston for the last game of the season, and he had a bonus on the line. He had, I think he had 19 goals, and he needed one goal for 20 and for his $10,000 bonus. And at that point, I went into Don Cherry's office, and I said, Grapes, please let me cover Tiger. It's well documented how he mugged me for 60 minutes. Now, I didn't see him for years after that. And uh, we were playing at a charity game out in Vancouver, and I was already on the bus, and he got on the bus, and he's walking to the back of the bus staring at me, and he's just walking with locked onto my eyes, and he said, you owe me $10,000 plus interest. <laughs> Tiger not only expected a lot of himself, he expected it of his teammates. You throw 20 guys in the room, some guys got to be the drill sergeant. If a player was slacking a bit, Tiger would tell him, Tiger would say, hey, you know, get going. I think players in the dressing room realize that even though you're on his side, if you weren't uh, pulling your weight, if you were, you know, screwing around and uh, not living your life, uh, that was uh, in the best interest of winning hockey games, and Tiger might make you accountable in practice. You know, he might take a run at you, he might stick you, he might do something, you know. I'm still like that. I want you. I know you got more, so give it to me. By 1978, the Leafs were on a roll. They took a run at the Stanley Cup. In 1978, the Islanders had a very strong team, and they played the Maple Leafs in the playoffs. Every single game was just brutal in terms of the ferocity, in terms of the dirty play, and Williams was uh, right up there. The Leafs were victorious, 
and faced Montreal in the Stanley Cup semi-final. They lost in four straight games. The following year, they met the Canadians again, this time in the quarters. In game four, they were down three games, but putting up a fight when Tiger took a controversial penalty. Tiger blew his cork and was heading for the referee, and there was great speculation that he was going to do something dumb, like make contact with him or swat him or something. And remember, Larry Robinson stepped in and almost picked Williams up and turned him away from the uh, official and said, David, don't wreck your career by doing something stupid. Everyone tried to help Tiger out that way, and I think that's what happened through his career. Everybody recognized him as, as, uh, as such a competitor. Montreal went on to win the Stanley Cup again, and for Toronto, the changes began. I really respect the Toronto Maple Leafs, and I love to be a Leaf, but there were low times when I said, what is wrong with this franchise? It won't bother you if you're in the fetal position. Abort the fetal position! No, baby! Without a paddle, with tons of hilarious extras, including 13 additional scenes, now on DVD. Get your skis shined up, grab a stick of juicy fruit. The taste is gonna move ya. Take a sniff, pull it out. The taste is gonna move ya when you pop it in your mouth. Juicy fruit is gonna move ya. Sweet. Juicy fruit. Sweet. Sometime between Friday's late night dip and dinner on Sunday, the moment may be right. And you can be ready to respond to your partner. Even if you suffer from erectile dysfunction, a variety of treatments are available. So ask your doctor which treatment option is appropriate for you. When the moment is right, you can be ready. Thing. Keep blowing stuff up. Blow the living snot out of it. Blow the living snot out of it some more. Mercenaries play better destruction in stores Thursday, Ready Teen. Bell Express View, Canada's leading direct to home satellite company. TSN, Canada's sports leader. The people who bought you Canada's most popular sports website, tsn.ca, now take you to the next level. Get all the latest scores, standing to news from around the sports world, right on your TV. TSN Extra. Interactive sports television. Access channel 275 on Bell Express View. In 1979, the Leafs got rid of coach Roger Nielsen and GM Jim Gregory. Punch Imlach was the new general manager and part of the coaching staff. He tried to motivate and coach like he was back in the 40s and 50s, but we were in the 70s and 80s and times have changed and he didn't catch up to that. Imlach was trapped in a situation where Daryl Sittler had a no trade clause or a trade refusal clause in his contract. And M. Locke thought Sittler was in the declining time of his career, and uh, Sittler having this trade thing on his contract was very off-putting to Punch. He could not get rid of Sittler, but Punch could trade away his friends. Lanny McDonald was the first to go. And we were so upset and so disappointed and so frustrated and so mad, and, and we probably caused $10,000 damage in the leaf room. That was a sign to me that the Leaf management wasn't really concerned about putting together a winner. Williams was traded to Vancouver not long after McDonald left the team. Your first trade is way more dramatic than anything you ever do in that entire league. 
It's ahead of being drafted. It's ahead of being signing your first contract. It's ahead of your signing bonus. It's not an easy day. When Williams came back to Toronto for the first time with his new team, he had extra motivation. He was determined to go show people that they've made a mistake in Toronto and trade them. Yeah, I scored a goal and then he rolled the stick like a horse up the middle of the ice to, you know, great really. He received a really positive reaction from the, uh, from the fans because the fans always love guys who try. He deserved the welcome back to Toronto because he had given his heart to this team. I'm glad of that. You know, not for me, but for all the, the Leaf fans for six years. We're always in my corner. And they deserve that. All Dave had known in his six-year NHL career was the way things were in Toronto. Vancouver would be an adjustment. In Vancouver, they had maybe been uh, used to losing and maybe just didn't have quite the right mentality. And I think he saw some frustration there with some of the guys uh, initially that they just weren't uh, as committed. To. In 1980, Tigers' first year in Vancouver, the Canucks lost in the first round of the playoffs. The Sabres beat them despite Tiger cracking his stick over Buffalo coach Scotty Bowman's head. I was talking to somebody, and Tiger comes along. I said, Tiger, and so he came over, and I said, what are you doing? I said, don't, like, don't you know Scotty's got a plate in his head? And I remember Tiger just said, that's where I was aiming, and off he left. <laughs> so, I mean, no, Tiger would, wouldn't mean that, but it was... It was great. That's the way Tiger was. It was not an admirable act, but it showed Tiger was still Tiger. He still had the toughness, but he also had compassion. I remember uh, the coaching staff coming in and asking if anybody had a bonus in the last game of the season. And I did. It was a games played bonus. I was going to play in my 40th game. And I remember turning to Tiger and saying, what do I do? Do I go and tell them? And he, he just said, don't worry about it. And he got up, walked in the room, went in, talked to Roger Nielsen and Harry Neal, and uh, I was in the lineup that night, got my bonus, which at that time was huge for, uh, for me. In his first full season with the Canucks, Tiger scored a career-high 35 goals. By 1982, the Canucks had a new attitude, and it carried them to the Stanley Cup Final. I think that a lot of credit for our run uh, in 82 has to go to personalities like that that were on our team, and Tiger was one of the strongest personalities we had. We uh, went to the island the uh, opening game, and I mean, we were on a high. I mean, we, we didn't care about the Islanders. I mean, they were, in, I guess, in the middle of their four in a row, but we were at the point where we thought it could beat anybody. The Islanders won that first game in overtime when Vancouver's Harold Schnapps threw the puck up the middle to the Islanders' Mike Bossy. It was a heartbreaking loss, but Tiger wasted no time in making light of it the next day at practice. When Harold finally came onto the ice, Tiger had arranged it so he was somewhere up near center. And as soon as Harold stepped on the ice and touched the puck, Tiger just yelled out, Snapsy, up the middle, up the middle. Well, of course, even the Harold, that was it for Harold. He started to laugh and everybody could, every, and it broke up everything and, uh, and it was terrific. The Canucks had shown they could contend, but the cup went to the Islanders. Two years later, Tiger was on the move again, this time Detroit. There were two more trades for Williams, Los Angeles and finally Hartford, where his NHL career ended with no regrets. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks other than the five teams I played on and you know, the seven or eight or nine coaches I had is that they knew they got everything I could give them. 14 years in the NHL. Not bad for a kid few believed in, but life after hockey would also have its challenges. I remember he told me about six months since he retired that he, you know, he's just totally lost. In Good Company is without a doubt the year's surprise hit comedy. What a kung fu grip you got there, Dan. Newsweek raves in a holiday movie season up to its neck in darkness. This nimble comedy is a welcome respite. In Good Company, exclusive engagement now playing everywhere January 14th. Get your ski shined up, grab a stick of juicy fruit. The taste is gonna move ya. Take a sniff, pull it out. 
the taste is gonna move you when you pop it in your mouth. Juicy fruit is gonna move ya. Sweet. The juicy fruit. Sweet. Morning, Peterson. Morning, Roger. Go somewhere hot for your vacation? No, I don't leave until Friday. Hey. Hey. What's with him? Crescendo Rising Crust Pizza from McCain. It rises up fresh and full of flavor, right before your eyes. Nothing rises like a crescendo. You are a mercenary. Blow up anything. Keep blowing stuff up. Blow the living snot out of it. Blow the living snot out of it some more. Mercenaries Playground of Destruction in stores Thursday, rated teen. Hi, this is Mr. Foreman. If you ever give my daughter an alcoholic beverage, I will hunt you down and neuter you. Dad! Dinner's ready. A daughter in college. I got you some pepper spray. Oh, how sweet. A baby on the way. But it's never too late. How old are you? 26 years old. You're my new boss. To be surprised. How old are you? I'm 51. Wow. It's like a year older than my dad, so that's weird. Yeah. In good company. Exclusive engagement now playing everywhere January 14th. When Dave Williams' NHL career ended, it would take time to figure out the next step. Luckily, he had thought about the moment long before it came. He always was looking down the road. And I think today's athlete does that but he was ahead of his time. Dave was an individual that uh, did not go to the, uh, to the secondary people in a, uh, in a big corporation. He'd always talk with the president. Today, Dave has business interests primarily in oil and lumber, and as with all his pursuits, Williams is uncompromising in his approach. Business is uh, a game, but I don't think you know money's a means all to ends all for David. I think it, uh, it's more just a, you know, a stat sheet to kind of keep track of if he's winning this game. Tiger keeps busy outside of business as well. The Special Olympics has been his charity for over 20 years. We've got many handicapped athletes out of the closet, out of the house, off the couch, and into all these great programs for winter and summer sports. It produces the concept of teamwork, your self-esteem, and that's what the program is all about. You know, be, them trying to be the best they can be every day. Aside from the young people involved in Special Olympics, Williams now has a grandson who also benefits from his generosity. Dad, he's great with kids. Like, he's always really good with kids. So with his first grandson, he's just like shining star. <laughs> they have a lot of bonding ahead of them for sure. Tiger will no doubt pass on to Ethan the simple lesson that's guided him through life. There's no room for failure. We we make mistakes every day, but we're here to win. Tiger Williams is still hard at work. Now he toils on the West Coast. Everything he is can be traced to his prairie roots, and he puts the same dedication into his work, charity, and old-timers hockey that he once put into his playing days in the NHL. For Profile, I'm Rod Black. Center top 10. What will it be tonight? Watch it and find out. The Sports Center top 10. One more reason TSN is Canada's sports leader. Five. Oh my goodness! Oh, are you kidding me? Hey everyone, welcome back to our Sports Center newsroom. I'm Gino Retta. The next edition of Sports Center coming your way at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Here's a quick look at some of the stories we're following for that show. The Raptors and Celtics on the court. Quick start for the Raptors. Chris Bosch with the hoop and the arm. Paul Pierce responds with a jumper. 
points. Now Raptors up by six in the second quarter. A report in the National Post claims Dallas Star Center Mike Medano feels the resolve of the players may not last through a lost season. But today, Medano says he feels his comments were misconstrued and he backs the union 100%. We'll hear from him as well as our hockey experts on SportsCenter. And the sale of the Calgary Stampeders is now official. Michael Federick has sold the club to a local group of investors. We'll have all the latest news and reaction from that story. Also on SportsCenter, the latest on the recovery of Sidney Crosby's World Junior jersey. That and more coming up on SportsCenter at 10 o'clock Eastern. Stick around. we got a little hockey. World Stars next on TSN. The uniforms are new, but the faces are very familiar. They are called the World Stars, a team of the NHL's elite on a modern-day barnstorming tour. Led by Sergei Fedorov and Martin Brodeur, these world-class players faced off against the best that Europe had to offer. Fedorov now, Fedorov went ahead to Murray into the middle for Fedorov, oh, what a stop! The first stop was December 9th in Latvia. The World Stars versus Riga 2000 next. Hey everybody and welcome to our TSN studios. I'm James Duffy. Well, here's a real treat, hockey fans. Actual hockey games with real NHL players. Yes, to fill your hockey void, tonight we present the first of seven Primus World Stars Tour games. The World Stars team made up of NHLers from around the world, including Martin Brodeur, Rob Blake, and Sergei Fedorov. They are coached by former NHLer Marty McSorley. Now, back in December, they embarked on a 10-city tour, including stops in Russia, Slovakia, Switzerland, Sweden, Norway, and Poland. And tonight, Game one is the World Stars take on the Riga 2000 team from Riga, Latvia. Now, Latvia has produced several NHLers, including goaltender Artus Erbe and defenseman Sandis Ozelinch, who were both born right in Riga. Latvians are also huge hockey fans, as we hear from World Stars forward Anson Carter. Well, we have some pretty passionate fans back home, but uh, the fans here are like nothing I've ever seen. Uh, the people here are so passionate about the game, it's almost like an event every single hockey game. And their whole day's planned around it from tailgating up until the final whistle. Now tonight's game in Riga was the first stop on this tour and since not every player had joined the team, the World Stars had only 15 skaters available for the game. One way to get back in playing shape and fast. With the call, here are Dave Randorf and Gary Green. The World Stars in black with purple and white trim will start a line centered by Sergei Fedorov, Alexander Degg on the left side, Glenn Murray on the right, Barrett Jackman wearing number 42 along the blue line with Rob Blake and we're underway. Riga controls off the opening faceoff coming out of their own zone, long pass into the middle is broken up. Here's Murray now chasing it in there against Carlos Skrastic, the only NHLer on the Riga team. He's paired along the blue line with Ronald Ozelinch, no relation to Sandus Ozelinch, who is from Riga. Not here tonight, however. Murray in behind the Riga goal. Goes into the corner, clearing attempt, goes off for Shin and down the ice. Chasing after it is Sapulis into the corner. Vera Jackman watching him. Hobbles now in behind the net, has the puck taken away by Rob Blake. Along the near boards into the middle, Sapulis with a first shot of the game, and it's handled by Brodeur and swatted away out of midair. Better off now to center ice, try to leave it for Murray, he dumps it in. And they'll go for a change. You saw that last breakout by the Latvians. They tried to use that long pass. The World Stars were expecting that. When I talked this morning to Marty McSorley and Mark Bergevin, the coaches of this team, they were kind of telling their players that, look, these guys are pretty good passers, so watch for up the middle. Take away that middle ice area. Now the ice for the World Stars. Tony Amante went his pocket pick. Ankepaz with a hard shot and a good stop there by Brodeur. Rebound cleared away. Anson Carter and Ray Whitney out of the ice with him. And that puck is cleared up and over the boards and out of play. I talked about the coaches for the World Stars. That's Marty McSorley. And the head coach actually is Mark Bergevin. They're both, though, sharing their duties. One thing they wanted to make sure their players did in this game tonight was to keep the shifts short. Remember, conditioning might be a factor here. The World Stars haven't exactly had the opportunity to play many games, and certainly not together. A couple of practices, that's been it. 
We'll have to see what kind of timing the World Stars have together. There are a couple of guys here who are teammates. There's two on the ice right now along the blue line, Robin Regeer and Rhett Warner, but these guys just had their first couple of practices together, and it'll take a little while for the on-ice chemistry. They're such skilled players, though. You know that they're going to rely on their skill. They've got great speed. It's a question now of keeping those shifts short and being able to really get their legs early. Ty Domi into that corner, as he likes to do, and taking the body. Ty well, Domi. The fans kind of ooing about that one. They know Ty Domi here, believe me. Ty Domi out with Chris Draper and Luke Robitaille, who just arrived late yesterday. Domi tried the headband pass up to Robitaille. It was broken up. Now chasing after it is Igers Moranovic, wearing number 79 for Riga. In behind his own net, steps out. First pass is a good one to Brancis. Brancis up the center ice, shovels it in there, and a little confusion at the line offside. Latvians took advantage of that change by the World Stars, and as a result, were able to come out of their own end zone rather easily. There you see Barrett Jackman, who had such a great year two years ago with the St. Louis Blues, winning the Calder Trophy, of course, but then last year, suffering that injury that kept him out for most of the season. Suffered a shoulder injury against the Vancouver Canucks, and uh, he was only able to play 15 games after playing all 82 in his rookie season. Now here comes Riga at center ice. Playing the dump and chase game. Set in after it against Jackman. Brodeur handling the puck as always. Helps out. Now the puck blasted in from the air point. Kicked aside. And now here's a rush for the World Stars. Glenn Murray trying to feed Alexander Dagg on the fly and just missed him with a pass. Of course, we are playing on the international ice, so a lot of room to move here for Dag and company. Far pass to the far side for Anson Carter. That's the first shot on net for the World Stars, and it's handled easily by Romashko. Tony Amante tries to keep it in. And Riga will start out. Chipping it in is Sapulis out of his net to handle it, Brodeur. And you've seen the Latvians not be afraid to dump that puck in and chase it. Here comes Carter, drops it off for Whitney. Whitney takes a shot, deflected wide. Carter in behind the net. Backhands one back to Ray Whitney. Here's Whitney into the middle now, into a lot of traffic, and that play is broken up, and Regal will start out again. The crowd appreciating the effort of the home team here. Abels now in behind his own... Net of the World Stars net now leaves it for Skraskin. She redirects the shot in on Brodeur and deflects out of play. The all new Jeep Grand Cherokee with an interior that's quieter than a Jaguar S-Type 3.0. It's worth a look. The off-road legend continues on road. The Expedia.ca Escape Winter Sale. Right now, escape to Florida, Mexico, Las Vegas, the Caribbean, and Hawaii. The Escape Winter Sale. Book before January 31st. Expedia.ca. Now we're getting somewhere. Here I am, 50 years old, and uh, I'm out in a bikini, and that makes me feel very good. How can a 50-year-old grandmother look this good? Simple. She strength trains with Bowflex. I'm 50 years old and I have a Bowflex body. Call the number on your screen now to get a free video or DVD that shows you how you can get great results with Bowflex. My results are very real. I lost 17 pounds in the first five weeks on my Bowflex. I'm leaner, I'm happier, I'm sexier than I've ever been. All it takes for great results is one simple workout done 20 minutes a day, three days a week. It's safe, it's reliable, and I can get a good workout from head to toe. Own your very own Bowflex Extreme for no money down and payments of just $18 a month. No matter what your age, if you want real results, you need a real Bowflex. Call us for a free DVD or video or visit us online today. Everyone wants your money. 
someone's hand is always in your pocket. Still, you rescue a few dollars and put your savings in a bank beyond their reach. But are they? Most banks pay almost no interest and shrink your savings with service charges. One more hand in your pocket. ING Direct pays high interest on every dollar you save and never makes you pay a service charge. Your savings grow. Call. Save your money. You know why so many people like the taste of Subway sandwiches? It's simple. They only put on what you like the taste of. Every Subway sandwich is made fresh right in front of you. So you choose all the ingredients. The meat, the veggies, the sauces, the fresh baked bread, everything. No wonder so many people are leaving the burger joints and coming over to the great taste of Subway subs. Because when you really think about it, they don't make the sandwiches, you do. Subway, eat fresh. One thing that I'm sure Marty Brodeur is thinking about is that he knows the World Stars are only playing with three lines, six defensemen, and as a result, they're short-handed. 17 skate or 17 players here for the World Stars. The Latvians have dressed 23. Usually, you can only dress 22 in international play. They've been added, adding the one extra. That's the like World a, Stars, okay. <laughs> like a men's league rec game when not enough guys show up on Sunday nights. More pressure by Riga. Akepon now in behind the net. Leaves it for Giannis Spruks. Giannis Spruks wearing number five for Riga. Draft pick of the Florida Panthers back in 2000. Draper in deep back into the middle. Quick shot and a nice save there. Off the stick of Ty Domi. Romashko kicked that one out nicely. Red Warner now up to Domi. Who would have thought Ty Domi would have the best scoring chance in the World Star Tour so far? Good coverage by Barrett Jackman in front of the net. He stayed right in the zone with his man. He didn't go off into the corner where he could have for an outlet pass. Rolandowski's with some great work in behind the World Stars net. Almost was able to feed it out in front, but instead here comes Glenn Murray. Murray from his knees, and Romashko makes a nice save as big Glenn Murray was in clean. Got up from his knees and got the shot away. You gotta love that one, folks, because that pass that went to Glenn Murray he got kind of tripped up in the play, but no sooner was he down than he was right back up again and still got his shot away. Ramashko ended up having to come make the save. You can see that he didn't really get tripped up. He just tripped up himself. But Murray was able to get right back up in order to get that shot away and then went crashing into Ramashko. Glenn Murray was in Europe not too long ago. He was a member of Team Canada at the 2004 World Championships in which they won a gold medal. Second straight for Canada at the Worlds. Dig up to Murray. Murray wide now, snaps a shot, big rebound, but it bounces right to Simmons of Riga 2000. Around the boards it goes, Brances chips it out. Sean O'Donnell now, now a member of the Phoenix Coyotes. After signing with them back in July, wearing number 21, here comes Riga. On the rush there. Zerinch. Rolls into the corner. Brances watched by Federov. Here comes O'Donnell now. Skating it outside of his zone up to center ice. Waits for the line change to complete and dumps it down. Sergei Federov doing a nice job defensively, taking his man out in that corner, allowing then the easy breakout and then also allowing for the quick change. Look at Riga use the big ice there. Bank pass, and that was planned too. Abels was able to get it deep. Now along the far boards. Riga fighting for possession, but Anson Carter has it. Was watching Whitney streak down the right side, but couldn't get him the puck. Now it's center ice. It's Abels again. Artis Abels had his pocket picked, and we are going to have the first power play of the hockey game. It is going to go against the World Stars as Riga has the extra attacker on here. Trying to organize things from their own end. Here's Skrastich. The reigning Ironman in the National Hockey League turns it over. Amante touches it. And Ray Whitney is headed to the box. Whitney ends up picking up a tripping call right in the neutral zone. And as a result, the Latvians are going to have that much ice to work with out there. Whitney definitely guilty of tripping up his man and for the World Stars right now it'll be interesting to see how they kill this penalty off. 
Remember, they're shorthanded here not in more ways than one. They don't have a lot of extra skaters on the bench, and so they're going to go definitely with three units killing this penalty. Not just two, but three units out there and try to preserve the legs as much as possible. Pretty quick shifts. They don't have a lot of manpower, and they don't have a lot of games under their belt at this point. Many of these guys have been working out, staying in shape, but that's not the same. And the World Stars have just taken another penalty. A high stick being called against Rob Blake. Accidental as it was, but Rob Blake's stick came up. And as a result, he's going out. He's going to join Greg Whitney in the penalty box. And for this Riga Latvia team, they are now going to have a lot of room and with the face off to the left of Marty Broder there you see that stick coming right up and as a result Rob Blake knew immediately that he was heading for the penalty box. Riga trying to control off the face off here they've got a five on three power play opportunity for another minute 17. Barrett Jackman trying to steer away from trouble he's being watched closely Anka Pons picks it up centers it comes back to the line. This is Lavinch now. Far side. Saevs into the middle. Spooks missed the run timer. And it rolls to the near boards. Up in the air it goes. O'Donnell can clear it. Zoltkovskis couldn't keep it in. And Norman's Saevs will have to chase it back into his own zone. I thought Brodeur was going to be a little busier than he was so far and has been on this power play opportunity by Riga. What a great opportunity to get the home crowd into it here with a two-man advantage. On the power play, still in effect for another 33 seconds. Back to the line it comes. That's Skrastinch. Ozelinch now back to Carlos Skrastinch of the Nashville Predators. Whistles one just wide. Formerly of the Predators, I beg your pardon, now the Colorado Avalanche. And out it comes. Robin Regeer now chasing it down the near boards. Killing off the last nine seconds of the two-man advantage. And Riga will have one last rush here. Up the ice, over the blue line, dropped off for Sapulis. Into the corner with it, this is Abels. Far side for Skrastin. Into the corner now, Whitney's back on the ice, so it's now a five on four for 24 seconds. In behind the goal, centering pass blocked by Jackman. O'Donnell fans on the clearing attempt, but to help him out, Tony Amante does the rest. We're talking about not many shots on Brodeur. One good opportunity. Speaking about a good opportunity, boy, you had a great opportunity today to talk to two of the greatest goaltenders right now that exist in Dominic Hasek and Marty Brodeur. Yeah. We're going to hear more about those two and listen to them in the first intermission. Yeah, folks, you're in for a real treat. Dominic Hasek, Martin Brodeur, side by side, talking about goaltending and all of their accomplishments. It was a rare and special opportunity, and that's coming up in our first intermission. Power play is over, so the World Stars weather an early storm here. Still no score in Riga. And game one of this 10-game tour in seven different countries, which will move on to Russia and Sweden, Switzerland. Luke Robotai chips it a loose puck into the middle, but Riga will skate it out. Draper now. At center ice, here comes Riga again. And it's Golzovs getting it back. And his shot is deflected into the corner. Smirnovs now with the puck. Smirnovs with a quick shot, well wide of the mark. Andre Smirnovs. Romanovsky's with it. Number 77, Vadim Romanovsky's, and they can't keep it in. Goluzo will chip it in and complete the line change. Brodeur out of his net to handle the puck. Swings it around near side. Here's Robotov. His pass broken up, pulled out of the air by Rhett Warner. And now chasing after it is Fedorov, almost picked the pocket, in fact he does. Fedorov into the corner, pinned against the boards. Puck comes loose, Warner steps up and keeps it in there. Fedorov still fighting for it, it goes far side where Alexander Digg is now trying to feed Robin Regeer and it hopped over his stick, but too far for the Riga forward, Zerich. Here comes Murray winding up and shooting a shot that was going high and wide, but Romashko snared it, and a face-off coming up. You are a mercenary. Blow up anything. Keep blowing stuff up. 
blow the living snot out of it. Blow the living snot out of it some more. Mercenaries Playground of Destruction in stores Thursday, Ready Teen. Sometime between Friday's late night dip and dinner on Sunday, the moment may be right. And you can be ready to respond to your partner, even if you suffer from erectile dysfunction. A variety of treatments are available. So ask your doctor which treatment option is appropriate for you. When the moment is right, you can be ready. Sore throat pain. It's hard to work, hard to think. Here's Rapid Pain Relief. New extra strength Sepacol lozenges, now in orange flavor. Sepacol numbs sore throat pain. With its menthocaine action, two anesthetics work together to help you feel better fast. Effective relief trusted by hospitals. The pain is gone. Sepacol lozenges and Sepacol spray to shower your throat with relief. Sepacol, rapid relief for sore throat pain. The Expedia.ca Escape Winter Sale. Right now, escape to Florida, Mexico, Las Vegas, the Caribbean, and Hawaii. The Escape Winter Sale. Book before January 31st. Expedia.ca. Now we're getting somewhere. TSN HD. Redefining the image of sport. TSN HD is proudly presented by JVC. JVC. The HD Technology Leader, available at DeMolin and Audiotronics. Wiki Wiki, lads and lasses! You represent the dawn of a new era for extra gum! You are going to give 120%, you feisty wee gaffer! Remember, ladies, you are extra! And you will last longer than ever before! Extra, the gum that doesn't give up. What are we gonna do? Last longer! Who are we gonna do? Never give up! No one knows Buckley's like the people who use it. So we thought who better to help us answer a few letters. Here's a letter from a Buckley's user. Dear Buckley's, it used to be hard getting my kids to take their cold medicine, but not since we started using Jack and Jill. They actually like the taste. Do people have a hard time believing Buckley's can make something that works and tastes good? Yeah, I think they do, but just get them to try it. Ask these guys. Jack and Jill children's cough and cold syrups. They work. John Michael Lyles with a quick shot through traffic. Romashko stopped that. The deflection by Whitney. He was right in front of Romashko. Now here comes Riga 2000. Zapoulos snaps it in there. Round the boards it goes. Sean O'Donnell. Lost control of it, and now here's a break for Whitney, but again, that was out of his reach, and Romashko came out and won the race to the puck. Turned over just outside the blue line. Here comes Bremchenkov with a quick shot. Deflected by Brodeur. Tony Amante now with numbers. Puck hopped around on him. Whitney had to get back on side, so Amante just sends it in. you got to be pretty pr impressed with this Riga Latvia team, and remember, folks, this isn't the national team. This is not the national team. This is a club team here in Riga. They play in two different leagues. They play in the Belarusian League, where they are middle of the pack at best. And they also play in the Nat Latvian National League, where they are the top team. Here comes Ty Domi down the right side. Centers a pass in for Luke Robitaille. His tip is well wide of the mark. As the World Stars have yet to find their timing. This is kind of expected. And at the same time, this Latvian team have been pretty impressive with their defensive play, with their control of the puck. They really take a look out there, and as good passers, they're able to find their men. This hasn't been easy for the World Stars by any means, and some, I believe, thought that it might be. Alexander Degg now sends one in front of the Latvian goal. Nobody was home to tip it in there. Led Murray now chasing after the loose puck. Fedorov still out there. And it goes into the World Star end of the ice. Rhett Warner chasing after it. Chips it high off the glass and out of play.
had a good chance to talk to the uh, head coach, Julius Super, today, didn't we? What a great guy he is, and I'll tell you, I like his attitude towards the game, too. Here you see a World Stars opportunity that ended up into the mitt of Ramashko. But getting back to Julius Supler, he really likes an offensive game. And there was almost a first offensive opportunity cashed in by the World Stars, but again, the puck seemed to hop over Robin Regeer's stick before he was able to get a shot away. And now here comes Riga. Crowd rises to its feet. There's a shot high and wide off the stick of Smirnovs. As they have certainly had the control of the play and the better opportunities, but having said that, here comes Whitney, and he had the puck swatted away at the last moment. Out with it now was Galvich. Lyles in after it is bumped off the puck. Avante being watched by Ozilich. Back to the line now and stepping out of the corner, or trying to, was Zerich. Couldn't make it. Around the far side for Anson Carter. Carter into the middle for Whitney. Here comes Ray Whitney now. Cuts into the high slot. Rolls off his stick and Carter can't help him out. Here comes Riga again. Over the line. At Sinning. Into the middle for Zerich. His shot was blocked by Lyles. Avante now. Less than five minutes to go here in the opening period. No score between Riga 2000. Here's a chance. Puck is still in Simmons for the shot, and it's blocked in front as well. A lot of opportunities for Riga, but they're not getting a lot of their shots through. And the important thing, if you're going to beat Marty Brodeur, you're not going to beat him usually on the first shot. You're going to have to get some people in front of the net jamming. You know, this game is being played, we mentioned on the top, Gary, with a, with a bit of a heavy heart. Former National Hockey Leaguer Sergei Zolzak, who was a member of Riga 2000, Last month, when he uh, passed away tragically, he away in a regular heartbeat. It happened during a game. He wasn't feeling well, went off the ice, and uh, passed away in the dressing room. He's a native of Riga, long-time NHLer, most recently with the Nashville Predators. And this game tonight is a tribute to Sergei Zoltok. Here comes Ronalds Ozilinch, chipping it off the boards and getting it out. Down the ice it goes. Robin Regeer over to his Calgary Flame teammate, Red Warner. Riga back the other way, but a sloppy pass is turned over to Ty Domi. Domi to Draper. Draper with a shot. Delayed penalty call coming up against Riga. So the World Stars will get an opportunity to go on the power play. A real nice touch earlier today, though, Greener. The, uh, the guys have had a very, very busy day, and it included a visit to the grave of Sergei Joltak which was uh, very, very special indeed. Joltak represented Latvia at the Worlds on several occasions. He led the team in scoring back in May in Prague. Also played for Boston Bruins, the Ottawa Senators, the Canadians, the Oilers, and he is missed in the hockey world. And he was a big one. You know, there aren't that many NHLers that come from Latvia, and he was uh, a big one. And a very well-liked man as well. Alexander Digg, who's out there right now with the puck, was a teammate of Joel Toxie in Minnesota. So the World Stars on the power play here, trying to open the scoring here. Rob Blake at the back end gets it down low. Side boards for Digg. Digg taking his time back to the line for Fedorov, who's playing the point here with Rob Blake. Play is broken up at the line. And look out here. Occupine coming back the other way, but they'll be careful with it. And just dump it down the ice. Here comes Barrett Jackman now. Up ahead to Carter. Carter over the line. Somebody lost their footing there. Here's Carter barging in. That was Amante who went sliding into the boards awkwardly. There's a good save by Ramashko from in close. And it's clear. And Amante seems to be limping a little bit. I don't know whether he lost his footing or was tripped up, but he went into the boards awkwardly, and now he's kind of going to the boards slowly. 
Offside at the line. I will use two grenades when one would work just fine. I will flip a coin to decide which building to destroy, and then blow them both up anyway. I will shoot first and ask questions later. I'm a mercenary, and I love my job. Mercenaries Playground of Destruction in stores Thursday, ready team. Wipe your Safeway Club card and watch TSN Monday through Friday to spot your name on SportsCenter Bottom Line Late Edition or on NFL Primetime on Sunday. You could win one of these great prizes. You could also win a fabulous trip for two courtesy of Conquest Vacations. Get a bonus entry when you buy Heinz Beans and Pasta, new SpongeBob SquarePants Pasta now available at Safeway, or General Mills Cheerios, assorted 450 to 575 grams. Swipe and win at Safeway today. In a new era of combat, a lone soldier will become the ultimate weapon. Mech Assault 2, Lone Wolf, rated T for T. Oh, that's great! But the client wants to move the meeting up to Wednesday. Get the team together, you pick up the reports, and leave the rest to me. Copy, Center. Hi, it's Lindsay Wright. I need all those reports printed by Wednesday now. Sure, we can do that. Thanks, you're a lifesaver. We're here for you, wherever you are. TSN HD, redefining the image of sport. TSN HD is proudly presented by JVC. JVC, the HD technology leader. Available at Sears. Ramashko, by the way, has played rather reasonably well. I mean, Ramashko has made the saves. And again, I mentioned that he played in the East Coast Hockey League. He played for Greensboro, but he's also played in the Russian Elite League. He's played in the Czech League. And so... He's up for the task, it appears, here in this game tonight. Here's Regeer. Tried a long pass. That's not going to work on this big ice. Was looking for Draper. Domi chasing it after it. Robotai following up. He can't get it deep either, and Regal will hammer this one down the ice where it's handled by Bordeaux, and immediately that long stretch pass up ahead to Domi and into the Riga zone. Well, when it came to the power play, the World Stars didn't have an opportunity to work on it. The coaches felt that if anything that they could put aside was that of the power play. They would let the players play with the skill level they had, and of course, most of these players play in the power play on their respective teams, and so let them go. They were more concerned, I'm speaking about the coaches, with the way that they handled the long stretch passes, the way that they killed penalties, and so far, the Latvians have not been able to be successful at scoring. It wouldn't have surprised the coaches for the World Stars if they had been down one or two goals in this period. Here's a centering pass for Glenn Murray, who's had a couple of good opportunities in the game, but has been unable to find the mark so far. Good rush there by Dig. Now Fedorov now. Feathering went ahead to Murray into the middle for Fedorov. And oh, what a stop by Romashko. And he's congratulated with a little tap on the mask there by Fedorov. That's a beauty. Well, you know the adrenaline's flowing for all of these Riga players, but for Ramashko, as mentioned early in this period, these are stars that he's seeing out there, and I'm talking about the skilled players. He just took that opportunity right away. Murray set Fedorov up, and Fedorov thought he had the top corner. Ramashko knew differently. Amante back out on the ice. That's a good sign for the World Stars. Looks no worse for wear. Hey, try to score from the short side. You're a Whitney. I mean, what do you got to lose? You didn't have anybody to pass it to, so even if you were on the goal line, shoot that puck anyway. Marty McSorley, who has experience, of course, as a coach. He coached Springfield of the American Hockey League. Phoenix's farm team, 17 years playing in the National Hockey League. Under two minutes to go here in the first period. Reminder of that interview with Dominic Hasek and Martin Brodeur coming up in our first intermission. 
as we come to you tonight from Riga, Latvia. A country of about 2.4 million. Riga has about 900,000 living here. Barrett Jackman with a shot from a pair tipped in. They score and open the story here. One nothing, World Stars. Barrett Jackman doesn't look as though he has missed anything from two years ago when he was the best rookie in the National Hockey League. Hanson Carter standing right in front of the net, but Barrett Jackman doing what good defensemen are supposed to do when they're back at the point and have possession of that puck. Get that puck away quickly, keep it as low as possible, and allow the forwards in front of the net doing some jamming to hopefully tip it in. That's exactly what occurred on that play. Whitney, I believe, was the man that ended up throwing that puck back to Jackman in the first place. Riga right back down on the attack. In behind the goal there, can't get possession. Here's Sean O'Donnell. Turns it over the line to Spruce. Walks in, shoots! Oh, it just trickles wide. It got through Brodeur, and it just trickled past the far post. Another shot on the way. Brodeur was given a bump by someone. Zolkowski was in too close to him and gave him a shot on the way by. They were inches away from tying that one up, and now here come the World Stars. Oh, it just hopped over the stick of Glenn Murray, who's been snake bitten in this first period. Set up nicely by Draper. Draper now in front, can't find the puck. Wild final minute here in the first. The defense Maseas for Latvia, he thought that the whistle had gone. That's why he threw the puck away, and it ended up right on the stick of the World Stars. Well, Draper's in there against Seavs now. Coming out with it is Degg. Fighting off the check, leaves it for Warner. Rhett Warner stepping up the play, moves in towards the net, gets the shot away. Puck's lying there. Draper winds and shoots, and it's up and over the crossbar. You know, it's usually the North American players that get confused with the whistles because the fans whistle so much that sometimes you think it's the officials. Final seconds ticking down here on the first period. That'll do it. The lone goal being from the World Stars, off the stick of Anson Carter, the shot from the point by Derek Jackman. Well, the World Stars come out of it with the one goal lead, but they come out of it with more than that. They come out of it with a respect level of this Riga Latvia team, knowing full well that they gotta play hard and play hard for another 40 minutes in order to beat this club, because this club now, I'm talking about Riga Latvia, have got a little bit of confidence. Here's your Bonasaurus combo with fries. Mm. Since the beginning of time. Your mutton combo with fries, sire. Very good. Combos included fries. Your deluxe combo with fries. Hey! The Wendy's has changed everything. Introducing combo choices. Choose fries, chili, baked potato, side, or Caesar side salad at no extra cost. Dave Thomas said you deserve a choice. Your classic single combo with the side salad. Thanks. And now you get it. Only at Wendy's. Our pickup window is open late. <coughs> When somebody sneezes, you say bushy, right? Right. So what are you supposed to say when somebody coughs? Robitussin. To help stop a bad cough, respond with the strength of Robitussin. <coughs> Robitussin. <coughs> Robitussin. Uh, Tim, it's bless you for coughs. Yeah. To help stop a bad cough, respond with the strength of Robitussin. <coughs> Robitussin. Once a season, and only once a season, Moore's has a sale. Right now, over half our suits and sport coats are on sale at great low prices. You'll find a huge selection of dress shirts and hundreds of casual and dress pants. Plus, big savings on sportswear, outerwear, and shoes. Which means the only way to beat a Moore's price is at the Moore's year-end clearance sale. Moore's. Well-made, well-priced, well-dressed. Everything you think you know about Resident Evil. Evil has evolved. Resident Evil 4, Brady Mature. <laughs> Cherry flavor fisherman's friend. It works, and you can't beat the taste. 
Welcome back to the Primus World Stars versus Riga 2000 from Latvia. Now the World Stars may be shorthanded at forward and defense, but there's no lack of depth in nets with Martin Brodeur and Dominic Hasek. They are two of the best in all of hockey. Here's an excerpt from an interview they did with our Dave Randorf. Two of the greatest goaltenders in the modern era in National Hockey League history sitting right here. So we thought this is a rare and special occasion to sit down and talk to uh, you two guys about the position, about the game, where it's going from the goaltending position. First of all, what I want to ask you is, when this roster was named, did you look and see, hey, Dominic Hasek, Martin Berger, did you recognize the significance of you two guys, even for a brief period, playing on the same team? Well, when I saw it, I thought, I was like, geez, that's going to be great for the fans, you know? Like, you know, going to Europe, they don't used to see us too much, and to have me and Dominic in the same team, it will never happen again, probably, you know? But uh, it's definitely uh, it's quite an honor to be able to be here and then be with him, uh, you know, for a short period of time like that and, and try to learn from him a little bit. You know, he's been around for a long time, so it's been, uh, you know, so far it's been a fun time. Thank you, Marty. <laughs> I think we play once together in the in All Star game yeah, before it true. was like World against Europe format. I mean, World against North yeah, America. Yeah, in San Jose we played. That's true. Yeah. So wow. now you know we're gonna share time, and it's it's great to be on this trip. You know, and go back to Europe for me. I I've played here for from my childhood up till 25, but in last 10 years, you know, I played only. I think only twice or three times a game in Europe. So for me, it's a great experience to go back to Europe and go to places like Moscow and and Sweden, where I used to play as a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, adjusting yourselves, personally, your game on the big ice, be it the Olympics or just playing here uh, on a tour like this on the big ice. Tell us uh, what's involved there from a goaltending perspective, Don. Uh, the game is <clears throat> definitely a little bit different. You know, there is more. I would say it's more passing, more skating, not as much physical. There is, n you won't see as much traffic like in the NHL in front of the net. And especially European, they like more pass. It's more passing. Um, I think this is the biggest difference. And also there is much more room behind the net, more room to get to the corner. So the players, especially when I used to play in Europe, you know, it's long time. I mean, when I came to the to play, to the NHL, I couldn't handle the puck because the coaches in Europe, they don't ask you to handle the puck. You are here. I mean, you are in Europe to stop the puck, leave it for the defense. So this is something I had to adjust to play in the NHL because the rink is big and the goalies are not to play the puck as much. Maybe it changed recently, but when I played here, you know, it was completely different. The game is just, it's funny how you have more skating, you know, you have more passing, but it's a little slower because there's so much room. Guys take their room and it skates and so for a goalie, it's kind of you have to be passive in the net compared to you know being really challenged. And when when I play in the NHL, I love to challenge, and I don't even think about the guy passing the puck because there's nowhere for him to pass it. But over here, you just gotta sit back a little bit. You know, you just gotta look look around, be aware because these guys are you know could be in the corner and would make a pass. I mean, it's a hundred foot pass they're making sometimes. Now, Berdur started this game. Hasek will take over midway through the second period. The World Stars with a one nothing lead after 20 minutes on the goal by Barrett Jackman. Just a reminder, TSN will show six more World Stars games. The next one coming on Tuesday, January 18th. Their opponent, the Russia West All-Stars. From there, it's games from Switzerland, Sweden, Norway, and Poland. All right, let's head to the second period. Here again, Dave Randorf and Gary Green. Here comes Sapoulis. Trying to draw a pass. That's broken up, and Rhett Warner will start the other way. Pass to center ice area for Luke Robitaille. Ray Whitney dancing in, fresh legs off the bench. Remchinksov gets it to Abels. This is Sapoulis dropping it off for Skraskin. Shot, rebound, lying there, and Whitney cleared it at the last second as a Riga player went crashing into the World Star goal. Well, I mentioned at the end of the first period that the World Stars may have gained some respect for this Riga Latvia team at the same time Riga Latvia players may have gained a little bit more confidence or maybe a lot more confidence against this World Stars team and at the start of this second period you can see that the Latvians aren't exactly going to lay back they're going to try to take it right to the World Stars and again I'll go back to their coach Julius Supler who really does want his players to use their skill, use their offense. He's not a trapping style of coach. He wants good defense, but not at the sacrifice of good, fun, skillful offensive play. Zelkowski's now 
Waits for his teammates to get on side. Turn the puck over. At center ice, reaching forward is Amante. He was beaten to the puck there by Lavinch. Carter can't find it in his skates. Here's Saevs. The veteran Saevs fans on the pass attempt. Giannis Spruks gets it to Ankepon. Spruks now. Little give and go with Ankepon. Puck out into the middle, kept in by Saevs. Flips it back in there. And then gets it back to the line. Into the corner now. As Riga's got something going, shot is blocked, and here comes Tony Amante. At the end of his shift, was looking for Lyles. World Stars aren't exactly jumping when they turn that puck over. They've got to get a little bit more speed through that neutral zone because the Latvians are just doing too good of a job of being right on top of them, not allowing them really to make much of a pass. Here comes Smirnovs, who was in behind the defense for just a moment before Blake got back in a position. Still with it. Rolls all the way to the line until the World Stars get it out. Smirnov's working over Digg. And it comes back to Rob Blake. Of the Colorado Avalanche. Dropping it off for Murray. Into the middle looking for Digg. Back to the line. Here comes Jackman stepping up from the blue line. Leaves it for Fitterov. In behind the goal looking for Digg. That pass was cut off. And this is Vadim Romanovsky's down the right side. Romanovsky's into the middle. Was looking for Francis. He was tripped up. And here comes Murray. He's got Dig near side, drops it off for Fedorov. Sergei Fedorov shoots right on, saved by Romashko. Big rebound, and now Riga turns it back the other way. Smirnov with a long shot that's not going to beat Marty Brodeur anywhere. Well, speaking of Marty's, I think Marty McSorley probably talked to the, his team about jamming the net a little bit more. You saw in that last play by the World Stars is that Fedorov got the scoring opportunity, but Glenn Murray had gone to the net after dropping that puck back to Fedorov. World Stars have got to do more of that. Roll the tie into Domi with a quick shot, and that was deflected in front. Tie Domi back to Roll the tie. Roll the tie, Domi and Draper out there together again. There's Domi. Draper with a one timer right on the mark. Romash go in position to make the stop. Latvians are very disciplined at their defensive play. They're not being overly aggressive, but they're being very good positionally. And as a result, they're forcing the World Stars to kind of shoot from the outside. Romashko, the way he's playing, he's not going to let many of those in. Draper into Domi. Domi's had some good chances tonight in this hockey game. Well, Ty Domi can skate. We all know that. He's aggressive in the NHL, but. On this big ice surface, you can't be concerned about Ty Domi's skating ability. That's, that for that's for sure. He can get in there quickly. So good skating there by Riga's Gertz Zerich. Creating an opportunity. Scratch is trying to get away from Anson Carter. Carter hounding him all the way. Whitney now. Try to feather one ahead. That was cut off. Ronchenkov gets it back to Ozilich. Over to his defensive partner, Scratch. This is Abels into the middle, snapping a shot high over the World Star net. Scratched in, pinching in, into the middle. From Chinkoff, fans, and the shot puck is loose. Net is off the mooring, and Verdure has got the puck. May have kind of got hit in the head, too, at the same time. Marty Verdure was down covering the front of that net, but he's a little shaken up. The Latvians coming right to the front of the net, trying to jam once that shot was in front of Brodeur. You saw Brodeur and you see him there. He's down, but you can see then he took his left hand and kind of put it on his head, but he seems to be okay. He's not going to have that much longer before he's going to get a rest because Dominic Hasek will come in midway through this second period. Marty Brodeur, the reigning Vizna Trophy winner, back-to-back -back winner of that award. Here comes Riga. Ankepon now with Lavinch. Lavinch back into Ankepon. Here's a great chance. Backhand and it's stopped by Berdur. Got just enough of it. Good looking rush there by Riga 2000. Lavinch tries to keep it in. Murray takes it out of the air. Dag was looking to be sprung at a breakaway. They can't get him the puck. Still 1-0. Over five minutes in. To the second period here, game number one of the World Star Hockey Tour in Europe. They'll play ten games over here. The Latvians keep looking for that stretch pass, even though the World Stars are back in the neutral zone. Here comes Riga again, puck out in front and chip just wide. Ankepon got a stick on it. 
as they're looking to tie this game up. Occupy, winds, fires, kicked out by Berger. Another shot of the way. Blocker save. Bats it out of the air, and the crowd's enjoying the show from Martin Broder. Here comes Domi now with Draper. Robitaille has it into the middle. Back to Domi. Too far for him. Has to chase it back of the goal. Here comes Domi now stepping out. Sends it back into the near corner for Chris Draper. Robitaille now after it. Almost looks like he's wearing his LA Kings jersey out there, doesn't it? And he wore that a few times. Robitaille into Draper. Draper fresh off the World Cup victory. O'Donnell steps up. They're cycling it around here. Finally, they turn it over, and it's flipped out by Riga. Three different tours of duties with the Los Angeles Kings for lucky Luke Robitaille. 18 years in the National Hockey League, 13 of those with the LA Kings. Here comes Amante, a big collision along the far side. Puck is centered, and it's turned over. Riga will come out. That was the biggest hit of the game. Sure, Amante felt that. Now here comes Ray Whitney trying to dance in, but he was just a step ahead of the puck at his offside. Hey, who shipped the 200 boxes to our client in Boston? Was it you, Lewis? I shipped them with FedEx. You're a heck of a man doing a heck of a job, Lewis. Trust the company with proven reliability. Relax, it's FedEx. Yeah, how you doing? You know, same old, same old. Great. Well, there you go. This week's shipment, GoldenEye Rogue Agent. Hungry for power after being dismissed from MI6, the dark side of the Bond universe beckons. Use your synthetic GoldenEye to rise through the ranks of villainy. Rot with mayhem, it easily attacks new highly intelligent enemies. Four players split screen and online play modes let you fight with and against arch rivalries from past on missions, vengeance, and demolition. GoldenEye Rogue Agent, made a team for team. Available at Walmart. Sore throat pain. It's hard to work, hard to think. Here's Rapid Pain Relief. New extra strength Sepacol lozenges, now in orange flavor. Sepacol numbs sore throat pain. With its menfocaine action, two anesthetics work together to help you feel better fast. Effective relief trusted by hospitals. The pain is gone. Sepacol lozenges and Sepacol spray to shower your throat with relief. Sepacol, rapid relief for sore throat pain. And right now, I think what we're seeing is just a little bit more confidence even than we've talked about by this Latvian team. Now they're starting to take the body. Now they're starting to look for those, well, maybe dangerous passes on their part, but at the same time, gambling passes to try to spring some offense. Zarich now, feathers one down low, and Moving in close was Renars Undelis. Happy birthday, 20 years old today, and he just put one past one of the best goaltenders in the world. We just finished talking about confidence. Well, do you think they've got some confidence now? Just flipping that puck in, but Undelis was down there, and he appeared to be all alone. Just a little bit of miscommunication by the world stars and they got outnumbered. Adelis ties it up and what a thrill this must be for the 20 year old from Riga. Fedorov now gets it over to Dig. Skrastich immediately meets him. Here's Dig. Fedorov one timer didn't miss by much. Blake returns the favor that's well wide of the mark. Jackman races over to try to keep it in. Instead, he'll chase it back. Fedorov now. That shot that Blake took was right down in front of us, and we're real close to the action, folks. We're in the crowd. I, we are in the crowd, but we're really close. 
to the ice. I thought Blake broke that stick. I'm so still not I. sure that it's in one piece. Well, we know it's in one piece. That's what they are, right? Sapulis now down the right side. Snaps one that Berger kicked aside. I mean, if it's hanging by tape. I know. <laughs> Here comes Fedorov again. The smooth, silky Sergei Fedorov trying to make things happen on his own. Romashko stared him down. Red Warner keeps it in. Into the middle for Murray. Puck loose for Draper just for a moment. Gets it down deep again. Romashko out of his goal. And that came outside the line. In international play, the goaltenders are allowed to have even bigger pads than they're allowed to have in the NHL. Uh, we got a too many men call here. That's uh, why that play was whistled down. Marty McSorley was talking to the official after the play, and it's too many men to be served by Luke Robitaille. Well, the players are going to be giving the coaches a rough time about that because whenever you get too many men on the ice penalty, the coaches always end up taking the blame. So Mark Bergevin and Marty McSorley, I'm sure they will hear it from the players. Well, we'll see if Riga can take advantage of this opportunity here after tying it up early in the second on a goal by a local kid who just must be, his head must be spinning. All of these guys were excited to play against these stars and to score a goal against one of the best goalies around anywhere. In front of friends and family must be quite a thrill. A huge television audience tonight in Latvia as well. Akipan now skates it in. His pass attempt comes outside the line. Lavin drills it back in there and behind the goal is Brodeur. Oh, got a little cheeky there with that clearing attempt. Knocked down by Riga. And they set up again. Ankepon missed the pass behind the net. Sprooks is out there. Here's Ankepon now. In behind the net, it goes for Zoltkovskis. Zoltkovskis banks it off the goal to himself, but Draper read that play. And play is whistled down. The World Stars were glass. in need of a break there. They were in need of some new bodies under the ice. There's a look at the second Latvian goaltender, Martins Reitums, who's getting ready to come in, as is Dominic Hasek in the World Star bench across from us. Shot of the way from Ronalds Ozolinch. That whistled wide. Skrastinch now. Remchenkovs with it. Number 22, Remchenkovs. Being watched there by Murray and O'Donnell. Gets it down low, quick shot. Nice save by Brodeur and cleared out of the zone by Fedorov. I think Marty's like this additional work in this second period, and he has had additional work. Here's a guy that's used to playing so much when you consider the fact he played 75 games again last year, most in his six previous six years, but you look back at 95 and 96, he played 77 games in the NHL schedule. He absolutely loves it. I don't think he'd want it any other way. And when you play for the Devils, some nights are busier than others, of course. Well, he's never and he's never played under 70 games in the last six years either. Well, and that can take nothing away from his performance. Tony Amante gets it back to the line. Power play is over, so Riga and the World Stars both back at full strength. Blake keeps it in. But only for a moment, now far side, that is Romanovsky's. He couldn't get to the puck. Scrastich following up on the play. He's played an awful lot tonight. Hey, everybody, hope you're enjoying the hockey game. Welcome back to our Sports Center newsroom. I'm Gino Retta. Just getting ready for the next edition of Sports Center that's coming your way at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Here's a quick look at some of the stories we're following for you Raptors and Celtics. Toronto lighting it up from outside. Ten three-pointers in the first half, setting a team record. It's now Raptors by nine. They continue to play in the fourth quarter. A report in the National Post claims Dallas Stars center Mike Medano feels the resolve of the players may not last through a lost season. But today, Medano says he feels his comments were misconstrued and he backs the union 100%. We'll hear from him as well as our hockey experts coming up on the show. Football news. The sale of the Stampeders is now official. Michael Federick has sold the club to a local group of investors. Also coming up on the show, the latest on the recovery of Sidney Crosby's jersey from the World Juniors and the Blue Jays have acquired 
Shea Hillebrand from the D-backs. All that and more coming up on Sports Center at 10 o'clock Eastern. Back to Latvia after this. You are a mercenary. Blow up anything. Keep blowing stuff up. Blow the living snot out of it. Blow the living snot out of it some more. Mercenaries play Grand of Destruction in stores Thursday, Rated Teen. In good company is without a doubt the year's surprise hit comedy. What a kung fu grip you got there, Dan. Newsweek raves in a holiday movie season up to its neck in darkness. This nimble comedy is a welcome respite in good company. Exclusive engagement now playing everywhere January 14th. The Coors Light Brewing Company salutes the buddy. I have told a ridiculous lie to back up a friend's ridiculous lie. I have slept outside because a friend put a sock on the doorknob. I have never hooked up with a friend's sister more than once. I have been a friend by being with my friends, girlfriends, friend. The Coors Light Brewing Company is proud of all the brothers from different mothers and the easy drinking taste of the ice cold silver bullet. Okay, so you have a choice of three things that are almost the same. When in doubt, go for the one that gives you more. Call Primus for the big savings bundle. Cell phone, local home phone service, plus long distance, and you'll save a bundle. More than $34 a month versus your local phone company, or over $400 a year. And there's the more only Primus offers. 250 Air Miles Reward Miles. With Primus Wireless, you can choose from a range of phones, including a free Sony Ericsson, and plans starting at $20 a month. With local home phone service, you enjoy the same quality service and phone number, starting at only $19.95 a month. We'll even throw in 1,000 long-distance minutes for just $5. Bundle them up and save $34 a month compared to you-know-who. Plus, the more. Lots of air miles, reward miles. So get a bundle, save a bundle, on one easy-to-read bill. To confirm availability, visit Primus.ca today or call 1-888-959-7934. Twelve-year veteran Dominic Hasek taking some uh, warm-up shots down on the World Star net. Of course, last season did not go the way he had hoped after taking a year off from playing in the National Hockey League. He went home and decided he missed it a little bit and then came back. Won himself a uh, after winning the Stanley Cup. And then, of course, there was a groin injury that limited him to uh, just a handful of games in what was a uh, soap opera of a season in terms of the goaltending situation in Detroit. But now he's an Ottawa Senator, as you can see by his helmet there, or at least he's waiting to be. He just missed the game too much. But I'll tell you, folks, and especially for you folks that are Ottawa Senator fans, I mean, Dominic Hasek is in really good conditioning. I was really pleasantly surprised when I saw him just the other day. He's lean, he's muscular, he seems to be in top performance right now. and. The best part for some of these young Latvian kids was last yesterday in practice when they got to shoot against Dominic Hasek. Some of the local players had the opportunity to come out and be a part of these world stars. And Dominic Hasek was out there. But I'll tell you this much. With the world stars, they were having difficulties during practice scoring on Dominic Hasek. But Dominic Hasek's not too pleased with his coach because Marty McSorley scored seven straight times on Dominic Hasek. So I tell you, <laughs> Marty's not in Dominic's good books right now. And interesting that uh, Hasek plays the second half of this game because if it's tied after regulation, guess what? Shootout. And we know about his record in shootouts. Or at least in one of them. A very memorable one. Battle along the far boards in the World Star end. Draper comes up with a puck. Flips it ahead to Domi. Domi can't get it out. Zarage keeps it in. Being helped out by Simmons. And here's Warner. Warner and, Warner and Regeer, of course, played an awful lot of hockey last spring for the Calgary Flames. Red Warner played in his third Stanley Cup final. You know, I'm starting to watch these players, and we're close enough, I can start to see their eyes. And a guy like Ty Domi isn't too pleased right now with the fact that they're not in a better position on the scoreboard against this Latvian team. Here comes Dave. Murray breaks towards the net. Dave's pass was broken up, and back comes Riga. And the crowd's getting louder as the night goes on. Sapulis, angled wide by O'Donnell. O'Donnell's pass turned over, right in front 
for Sapoulis, and the one-time tip was just wide. Fedorov now with a puck, trying to settle things down here. John Michael Lyles in for Murray. Glenn Murray trying to make a final move, couldn't get around the Riga defenseman. Now big Glenn Murray, the Halifax native, chasing after it along the near board. Here's O'Donnell. O'Donnell gets it into the corner where Fedorov has it. Now there's a one-timer from Murray. Didn't get all of it, and it went wide. In this situation, when you change goaltenders halfway through a game, both coaches' messages are the same. Start shooting as much as you possibly can, almost from any position. It appears that that's what these two teams have been instructed to do here. Here's a chance for Fedorov. Point-blank shot blocked fearlessly by Remchinkovs, who's feeling all of that one, and headed for the bench, slowly. The puck squirted loose, and number 91 leaned into it. Here comes Spruits. Spruits, he's in! Stopped by Hasek, and the puck rolls wide of the net. There's that old Dominic Hasek style. We down, got a roll. <laughs> Was able to keep the puck out, but they really it didn't come close to him. Unmistakably, Dominic Hasek. Another turnover, but Tony Amante was there just in time. Here comes Anson Carter. Game's opened up here a bit since the goaltending change. Carter trying to find some room. Not much there. Amante into the middle for Warner. Right in front for Whitney, and he couldn't receive the pass clean. Now here comes Zolkowski. Zolkowski's in. Warner's back, and he makes the play, and Zolkowski goes crashing into the boards. Edgars Zoltkovsky's with a great chance. Back come the World Stars, right in front. Amante waiting for that pass. Couldn't get the shot away. Regeer keeps it in. Not for long. Riga coming out with it now. Galuzzo to center ice. Over the line. He's tripped up. O'Donnell will take over from there. Not a lot of whistles in this game tonight. It's been fun to watch. One of the concerns of the World Stars, even this morning, before this game was their defenseman pinching and that's how the Latvians got that chance. Draper with a shot, good save, rebound, Robotai scores. Chris Draper with the shot and lucky Luke Robotai with the rebound and the World Stars retake the lead. Lucky Luke he is, but more skillful than lucky. Luke Robotai ends up putting that puck into the net after Chris Draper came in from the wide side, got the shot away, but Luke Robitaille knows exactly where to go in those situations. He knows that Draper's going to shoot the puck here. He really didn't have an opportunity to make a decent pass. It would have been a low percentage pass at very best, but Luke Robitaille knows one thing. He knows how to find the puck. He's got great hands. He's always had great hands. And you know, I thought for a while there, I think even the Detroit Red Wings thought that Luke Robitaille was done, but the LA Kings wanted to bring Luke Robitaille back for his third stint of duty, and it ended up paying off for them. Luke's still got mileage left in him, no question about that. Yeah, they got, oh, they only got 80 games out of him, 20 goals, another 20-goal season for him, 22 to be exact, 51 points. At 38 years of age, here they come again. Fedorov scores, goes top shelf as he waited for that puck to sit down for a second, and he roofed it, and here they go, it's 3-1 now. Remember a few minutes ago, I said I started seeing in the players' eyes where they were not too happy here. They were not too happy at the fact that they weren't beating this team, a team that they should beat. Well, Fedorov, who's had his opportunities in this game without any question whatsoever, Finally is able to bury one here, and bury it he did. He was able to get that puck, but get it late. But it, nevertheless, when you've got the hand and eye coordination of the very skillful Sergei Fedorov, then somehow he's going to find a way to settle that puck down. And then, look out, if he's in close, he's deadly. And he did exactly that. He was in close, and he was deadly. Here comes Abels now, rushing in, going to his backhand. Couldn't get a good shot away there. Scratched in, centers it. Whoa, oh, they score! Smirnov, as it just trickles over the line. And it's a one-goal game again. It was either 17 or 47. It was 47. So that's Martins Sapoulis, who got the goal to make it 3-2. Well, Sepoulos, who's only 24 years of age, gets a big goal indeed because this Latvian team, after being down by a couple of goals, so often in international play you will see a team against 
these highly skilled world stars all of a sudden kind of start to fade. But for the Latvians, they didn't do that at all. They came right back with a huge goal. And Sipolis ends up getting credited for that goal. The crowd was still cheering the announcement of the goal by Fedorov. Here comes Anson Carter right in. But the goaltender, Rightums, came out to challenge him. And now it's a break. Zolkovskis with help. Hockey Ponds and the pass back to him was tipped off the stick of Rob Blake. Here comes Amante leaving it for Carter. Carter into the middle for Whitney. And it's covered up by the goaltender, Rightums. Wow, what a turnaround by the Latvians all of a sudden. Forget everything you think you know about Resident Evil. I'm under the president's order to rescue you. My father? Oh my god! What's going on? Don't worry, Ashley. I'm coming for you. I am going to trap. Evil has evolved. Resident Evil 4 for Nintendo GameCube. Rated M for Mature. Only for Capcom. Okay, so you have a choice of three things that are almost the same. When in doubt, go for the one that gives you more. Call Primus for the big savings bundle. Cell phone, local home phone service, plus long distance, and you'll save a bundle. More than $34 a month versus your local phone company, or over $400 a year. And there's the more only Primus offers. 250 Air Miles Reward Miles. With Primus Wireless, you can choose from a range of phones, including a free Sony Ericsson, and plans starting at $20 a month. With local home phone service, you enjoy the same quality service and phone number, starting at only $19.95 a month. We'll even throw in 1,000 long-distance minutes for just $5. Bundle them up and save $34 a month compared to you-know-who. Plus, the more. Lots of air miles, reward miles. So get a bundle, save a bundle, on one easy-to-read bill. To confirm availability, visit primus.ca today or call 1-888-959-7934. Words are few, I have spoken. I could waste a thousand years. Wrapped in sorrow, words are token. Come inside and catch my tears. Do you really want to hurt me? Do you really want to make me cry? The World Stars all of a sudden being a little loosey-goosey, and the Latvians all of a sudden starting to pick them off with those long passes again, those stretch passes. And Dominic Hasek is going to have to be sharp if they continue to get away with those long passes. One thing is for sure, when you're allowed to make those long passes, those stretch passes, the defensemen have got to be conscious at all times of who's behind them. So oftentimes in North American play, you can keep your eyes in everything in front of you but in international play with that long pass you've got to be looking behind you all the time and then you've got to go you can't gamble and try to stand up on the play Robin Regeer and Giannis Brooks having a bit of a battle down along the far boards and that race for the puck and the ensuing play afterwards turned over at center ice again this is Smirnov dancing and there's Smirnov with a shot and Hatchet got a piece of that. Shifty number 17, Andre Smirnov. Here comes Fedorov. Fedorov has a goal in this period. Dig bumped off the puck. Murray sends it back in deep. Fedorov takes it on the back end. Cruises into the middle, number 91. Now the Ed High Mighty Ducks. Sean O'Donnell now stepping up. Puts it towards the net and it's kicked aside and over the very low glass here just in front of us. Sergei Fedorov decides he's going to put on a little bit of a show with his skills that he puts on a little bit of a show. The fans here really appreciate Sergei Fedorov. He's a huge hero to these fans here in Latvia. And Sergei Fedorov is one of the great puck handlers. Chris Draper there taking that draw. What a great year Chris Draper had. Always known for his speed and his defensive play. All of a sudden he's great offensively. Domi trying to center it again for Robotai. This line's been pretty good. Domi and Draper and Robotai, they've created some good chances tonight. A lot of nice ingredients there. Ty Domi likes to get in the corner. He likes to jam in front of the net. He does those, all those things very well. And then, of course, complimenting the two guys that he's playing with is what makes 
a line really work at times. And Tai Domi is out on the ice right now. Again, one of the great marketers, if not the best marketer ever in the in the National Hockey League. He's professional hockey players. They can all take a page out of Tai Domi's book. One of the great handshakers in the sport. Here comes Draper now. Leaves it for John Michael Lyles in front for Robitai. He was all tied up. Here comes Domi. His centering attempt was knocked down there by Galvinch. Sentence now in on Domi. Galvinch being hounded by Robitai. And here comes Galvinch with a headman pass to Sentence. Sentence in over the line. Leaves it for Zarens. And his wrist shot is snared by Hashik. Under three minutes to go here in the second period in what's been a fairly entertaining game, seeing as we haven't seen uh, hockey live in a little while. I'll tell you, it's a very competitive game. game. <laughs> it's a very competitive game, and it's only going to get more competitive in the next four or five games in particular because this World Stars team have got some very difficult competition. And you know something for the coaches, Mark Bergevin and Marty McSorley, is that it's good for them. It's good for them right off the bat to see that the Latvians have such a good team out here and that they're going to give their players a great challenge. Hobbles now in traffic. Feathers went in there. Right in front. Hasek sprawling across that crease. Closing all the openings and keeps it out. Now here comes Amante with Whitney. Back to Amante, and this time Whiteums does the same, and they crash into that net. And a face-off coming up. Zarich was the player that was up in front and hustles to get back. Right now, the World Stars have got to get in front of this Latvian goaltender and do a little bit more jamming. Marty McSorley would no doubt be telling his players about that. A told tough, aggressive player. Yeah, you just told the story about how this is a great opportunity for both he and Mark Bergevin to try out some coaching. He really appreciates this opportunity and, and wants to do well. And they, both of these coaches are taking this very, very seriously. They were here watching the Latvians practice this morning. They were talking and asking questions. I sat down with them this morning. They were, they know I've done an awful lot of international hockey and have had the good fortune of coaching internationally for the last couple of years with Team Canada in different international events. And they were very concerned about the stretch pass and making sure as well that their players were going to be able to, to play a system that was able to defend against that long pass. At the same time, they didn't want to overcoach because they know the skill level of these players on the ice for the World Stars. They also know that these players are here to win, but they're here to have a lot of fun, and they're here to be great ambassadors to the sport of hockey. We've already seen that in the last 48 hours. They really have gone above and beyond, and the organizers here in Riga have done a, a fantastic job getting these players around town to all the different functions that they've been planning. There's been a police escort for their, their bus, wherever we've gone, which is needed in this city. A lot of traffic. First class treatment without any question. Uh, these folks here in Latvia are very appreciative. Again, the benefits of these games going to two great charities and for the Latvian fans to be able to see these great stars is a real treat. In fact, they say it's the biggest event in Latvian history. When it comes to sports, and it comes to hockey in particular, they love their hockey, but they sure love seeing these superstars that have been on the ice with not only their team that they're cheering for here tonight, but with their young kids. Draper fans on that shot. Here's John Michael Lyles with a shot from the point. Steered aside by Wrightums. Lyles of the Colorado Avalanche coming off a strong rookie season there. Gets it back on it. Robotai has it. Robotai has the Lyles. Great shot. Thought it was in for a moment, but it's actually lying on the back of the netting. I don't know how it got there. <laughs> That's rather confusing to me as well because with the position that Luke was in, then how did that puck get to the back of the net without going in? And the, the officials are checking the meshing <laughs> of it right now. Yeah, a big event in Riga tonight, $160 US. It's the top 
top ticket price, and when you consider that the average salary here in Riga is 150 US a week, so that's one week's wage plus ten dollars to come see these guys tonight. They weren't all that expensive, but but as some of the people told me, is that it's a once in a lifetime, yeah. perhaps a lifetime opportunity for them, and they didn't want to miss that chance. Others of you have, as you have mentioned, are watching it on television here in Latvia. And I'm probably pretty impressed with the way that their team has played thus far in the game. It's a strong hockey tradition here in Latvia as well. And we'll get into that a little bit more in the third period as the time winds down here in the second. Time for one last rush perhaps by the World Stars. Here comes Whitney, angled off. Gets it back to Anson Carter, tries to go wide on Sennins. Carter now looking for the outlet pass. There it is, Barrett Jackman stepping up. Trying to give it back to Whitney, and he lost control of it. Round the boards it goes, and it's met by Rob Blake. Blake ahead to Whitney. Volters chips it off the boards and out. Down the ice it goes, and that will pretty well do it for the second period. A lot of goals, and it's still a one-goal game, 3-2 in favor of the World Stars. Too good. I think my battery's dying. Might be your oil. What's my oil got to do with it? A lot. That's why I use new Quaker State Winter Oil. But oil's oil. Not when it's this cold. Regular oil gets thick like molasses. Winter oil flows faster in cold temperatures. But mine eventually warms up. Right? Yeah, but without oil, your engine struggles to turn over and has to draw more power from the battery to get things going. Winter oil is formulated to lubricate your engine up to three times faster, which can relieve strain on both your engine and battery and can help your car start faster. Yeah, I had no idea. I know. Quaker State Winter Synthetic Blend Oil, only $4.99. Things just seem to get a little easier when you start at Canadian Tire. Okay, so you have a choice of three things that are almost the same. When in doubt, go for the one that gives you more. Call Primus for the big savings bundle. Cell phone, local home phone service, plus long distance, and you'll save a bundle. More than $34 a month versus your local phone company, or over $400 a year. And there's the more only Primus offers. 250 Air Miles Reward Miles. With Primus Wireless, you can choose from a range of phones, including a free Sony Ericsson, and plans starting at $20 a month. With local home phone service, you enjoy the same quality service and phone number, starting at only $19.95 a month. We'll even throw in 1,000 long-distance minutes for just $5. Bundle them up and save $34 a month compared to you-know-who. Plus, the more. Lots of air miles, reward miles. So get a bundle, save a bundle, on one easy-to-read bill. To confirm availability, visit primus.ca today or call 1-888-959-7934. Hey folks, and welcome back to the Primus World Stars versus Riga 2000 from Latvia. A lot more offense in that second period. Two goals for each team as the World Stars hold a 3-2 lead after 40 minutes. Now one thing to watch for will be the stamina of the World Stars and whether or not the Riga 2000 team can take advantage of the World Stars depleted roster. Let's take you to the third period. Here again, Dave Randorf and Gary Green. At the same time when we talk about the conditioning, let's not forget that this Latvian team is in mid-season conditioning right now for them because they start their season way back they're in training camp in early August they train even in July and so by the time September comes they're already in league play so it's not a normal December right now as we think of it in North America in the terms of a hockey schedule or season the Latvians are truly in mid-season form and for the world stars well this is a training camp for most of them we had a good conversation with the head coach of the Riga team, Julius Zupler, who, by the way, uh, has some experience coaching in North America, won a Memorial Cup as an assistant coach to Brent Peterson back in 1998 when he was with the Portland Winterhawks. And he had a, he's a Slovakian himself, and he had a Slovakian star on that team by the name of Marian Hosa. But he was telling us today how a lot of his uh, young players, and there are several of them, were looking at this. He, he, was, he was afraid they were going to be a little starstruck tonight. And he just wanted them to go out there and enjoy it. 
Well, now I'm sure he's thinking, hey, we're in this game. Let's let's uh, let's win this in front of the home crowd. I think Julius is enjoying it himself. Julius Supler, the coach of this Riga 2000 team, and newly appointed head coach, I should mention, because they fired their other coach, the Swedish coach, I believe, um, just in November, and so he has become the new head coach of this team. But talk about a guy that loves coaching, his coaching experience, 25 years of coaching in the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Russia, and as you pointed out, the Western Hockey League, also in Belarus. He coached the Slovakia national team. He's got a host of coaching experience. And this tonight, you could also tell this morning, was a big thrill for him as well. All right, we're underway here in the third period. 3-2 hockey game. World Stars trying to get their first win on this 10-game tour. Icing is the call. Faceoff coming back down into the end where Dominic Hasek is awaiting. This third period, we talked about short shifts earlier in the game. This is where it's really going to be important. Good, quick, accurate, very timely line changes on the World Stars' part, but keep those shifts short. They're no doubt feeling right now what might appear to them to be a long game already with only three lines, especially for the forwards. Lovinch with that shot off the face off from the point, which well wide of the mark. Carter gets it out to Whitney. He's got Amante with him. Ray Whitney trying to get away from Occupon. That would be called. In fact, it is going to be called. They didn't hear the whistle. The Hawking penalty has been, been called, as it should be. And Ray Whitney thought that he was away, but such is not the case as Ankepon ends up taking that hooking penalty and giving the World Stars an opportunity on the power play. So a power play opportunity early here in this third period for the World Stars. Murray wins the draw back to Blake cleanly. There's Sergei Fedorov, who has one of the World Star goals. Dig has the assist, and he's got the puck right now. So Fedorov lines up, takes a shot into a crowd. It goes off a stick and high into the netting in behind the Riga goal. The coaches talked this morning about what they were going to do on the power play, not from a practice standpoint, but from really just who they were going to put on the power play. And of course, Rob Blake, you know, was going to be on that power play. But they also felt that they would end up without question going with Sergei Fedorov at times back in that point, as you saw on the very first part of this power play. And he'll be back there as well. He just came up to take that face off. Now he's back on the line with Blake. Rob Blake to Alexander Jag. Cross sides to Federov. Quick shot. And it missed far side. That puck is post, poked loose by Spooks. Into the middle. Right up and what a poke check stop by Hasek. Great opportunity there by Zolkovskis. And Robotai's got it in the high slot. Feathers it down for Jag. Nothing there, so he gets it back to the line. Here's Blake to Jag. Murray back to Dig. His one-time shot is blocked. And Riga gets it out after coming very close, short-handed. Hey, that was a nice pass by Rob Blake. Right back to Dominic Hasek. A very intended pass. Hasek makes a good play as well. But, boy, the fans here were just treated to one of the great Dominic Hasek moves. Come racing out of his net, sprawling out to take that puck away. Dominic Hasek, you never quite know what you're going to get from him other than a top-notch performance. Here's Amante now, in behind the Riga goal, banks it off the board, pass Carter to Whitney. Whitney gets it back to Fedorov, who remains out there. Down low, hard pass to Carter. Whitney, into the middle, looking for Lyles. Back to Ray Whitney. Whitney now moves in, Carter goes in front of the net, back to the line, now is Fedorov. Fedorov waits for an opportunity. Here's Anson Carter again, down low to Ray Whitney. Carter goes in front, Fedorov with a shot, blocked in front, cleared but not out. Here's John Michael Lyles now. Power play coming to an end. Lorenovic oh, buries Fedorov. And team's back at even strength now. Fedorov in for Ray Whitney. It rolls away from him. Lorenovic watching his man closely. Now it's Fedorov at center ice. Fresh legs out there for the World Stars. This line is about to finish changing. Here comes Ozerich. Sinnott banks it off the boards. Back to Ozerich too far. And Draper will race after the loose puck. But delayed penalty coming up against the World Stars. 
Ty Domi over having a conversation with some of the players on this Riga Latvia team. <laughs> Ty likes to stir things up and wherever he is in whichever game and it's Ty Domi right now that is heading off to the penalty box. Look at it. He's still giving it to the referee there. He stirred it up to the point where he's taking a penalty. And he was letting the official who probably doesn't speak a word of English know what he thought about the call. Well, Ty's going to a familiar place, of course. In the National Hockey League during his career, he's had... 56 full games that he has spent in the penalty box. And when you consider that, you know, you usually only play 15, 16 minutes a game, it really means that this guy has spent an unbelievable number of games, 226 games of his normal ice time in the penalty box during his career. And he's got two more for <laughs> interference here, but so far Riga has been unable to penetrate the World Stars end. And you know, when people question about, well, why are they bringing Ty Domi for? And Ty, I think most people pointed out, hey, if you know if any of these teams start taking runs at some of the superstars, then, then you have to have somebody that can settle things down, and nobody does it any better than Ty Domi. Sapoulos, Abel's now near side, down to Sapoulos, who has one of the goals for Riga. Wearing number 47, Sennens is out in front. Back to the line, and it hops past Scrastich. Look at Chris Draper go after him. Chris Draper gets a lot of time on the penalty kill in Detroit. Along with his trusty grind line teammate, Chris Draper. 47 seconds to go in the power play. Spruks in there, fighting for it along the near boards, along with Anki Pond. Spruks in behind the net. Try to steer it back the other way, and it comes to the near point. Lavage to Anki Pond. Lavins now drifts one towards the goal. Barrett Jackman stopped that shot, and it's clear. Quick pivot by Amonti and got that puck out of danger, but as much as getting it out of danger, giving his teammates a chance to get quickly to the bench and get some fresh legs out there. Long shot handled by Hashik. Clearing attempt goes off some legs, and Robin Regeer can't get it out. Hashik made sure, too, that he kept that puck down low when he went to shoot it to clear it because this glass is very low along the sideboards. Jomi steps out of the box. Team's back at even strength again. So both teams have had a power play opportunity early here in the third. No goals, though. It's still 3-2. Now here comes Alexander Jag racing into the Riga zone. In behind the goal. Drops it off to no one. Sipoulos is there to pick it up. Zolkovskis. Check that Smirnovs. Banks it off the boards where Rhett Warner's waiting for him. You talk about Alexander Dago out there. I mean, what a comeback here he had. Did he not with Minnesota? I mean, their leading scorer. I mean, after spending some of the previous season, not only just with Pittsburgh, but of course also in the American Hockey League. I mean, here's a guy that retired for a couple of years as well, but Alexander Dago has really made it a quite an amazing comeback. He certainly has. There's Draper in close with a shot, but Wrightum came out to challenge him. Domi back out onto the ice. Being watched all the way along the near boards. It comes at the center ice for Blake. Now yeah, you're right. It's a, it's a great comeback by Dag. It really speaks was. to his talent that he had, obviously, as a youngster. But Whoa! A Zarich's sandwich between Jackman and Blake. And that is a hard hit from one of those two guys, let alone both of them. And I don't know if Zarich has ever been hit like that in his career. What a hit. What a collision. Well, I shouldn't call it a collision because a collision oftentimes referred to as an accident. That wasn't any accident. I mean, Rob Blake just came along and gave him a good, solid shoulder. A good, clean check. Oftentimes in international play, though, those good, clean checks put you in the penalty box, but not the case here. Zarens is just 19 years old. John Wharton came off the uh, World Star bench, who's the longtime trainer in Detroit, to help out, make sure he's okay. He's a little woozy, but who would be after that? It was quite a hit by Rob Blake, and hopefully, Rose Lynch is all right.
Puck dumped into the World Star zone from the far side. Shot for the boards. Seen and handled by Hashik. Amante now. Off the skate of Sinens. And now here's Ray Whitney who was busted in there. But Amante was a step behind the play. Couldn't catch up to that pass. Amante with Carter, gets it back to Tony Amante, little chip, and Wrightum's made a nice stop there. I'll tell you, folks, I mean, I know it's only seven minutes into this third, but the conditioning doesn't seem to be a factor for this World Stars team. Good hard one-timer by Amante, and the rebound off the stick of Lyles. Two good saves by Wrightum. You are a mercenary. Blow up anything. Keep blowing stuff up. Blow the living snot out of it. Blow the living snot out of it some more. Mercenaries Playground of Destruction in stores Thursday, rated teen.